Space. The Eternal Horizon. These are the voyages of the starship Amalthea. Its inaugural mission, to return as explorers to stars that were once battlefields, to make new discoveries and forge new friendships, to boldly go where Starfleet has never gone before. And ladies and gentlemen, we are now live. So, welcome everyone to the very first episode of Star Trek Adventures Amalthea. For those of you out there that are tuning in for the very first time, welcome again. Uh, we are playing the Star Trek Adventures role-playing game by Modifius Entertainment. And if you don't know what a role-playing game is, it's actually pretty simple. I, as the GM, set up the scene, run the universe and the NPCs, and act as judge of the rules. My players then act as their characters, occasionally rolling dice to determine how successful they are at certain actions. For Star Trek Adventures, you want to see lower numbers. Ones are a critical success, and twenties are a critical failure. There's a lot more I could probably say on this, but that's the general gist of what you'll need to uh, know going in. Uh, before we do begin actually proper, I do have a few shoutouts. The first shoutout is, of course, to my wonderful players who have returned from the Ophion game. Uh, it would not be possible to run this game without you guys. Uh, second, I would like to give a shout out to Vectober. Uh, they are going, or sorry, they're the ones that did all of the senior staff token art for the Amalthea senior staff, and they're really good work. I, you know, I'll I'll try to remember to link them in the video description, uh, but you should check them out. Uh, finally, uh, I would like to shout out to Star Trek Online for initially creating the Jupiter class. Because, uh, well, it's what we're going to be playing. Oh, and I guess it's also worth shouting out Modifius, because if they had never made Star Trek Adventures, we wouldn't be here. So, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. And, as my returning people know, we usually start with a captain's log, sort of like how some episodes of Star Trek actually do. And I believe, Mirthrin, you have the opening log. <clears throat> Indeed, uh, and I do. <clears throat> Personal log, stardate 62804.7. Well, this is it. There's a few loose ends to tie up at Starfleet HQ, but I'm not going to be able to put off boarding the Amalthea another day. I still haven't even seen the ship in person yet. I think if I did, I might just lose my nerve. It's common knowledge that reading the specs never gives you a full sense of a ship, but even on paper, the new Jupiter class is hard to wrap your head around. I mean, the nacelles alone are longer than half the ships in service. Okay, calm down, Sarvik. It's not going to be as bad as you expect. Think of it as a starbase. With phaser cannons. And four full squadrons of fighter craft. And a warp core powerful enough to run a small colony for a century. Which you are about to send through a wormhole into uncharted space. I swear this entire thing is Avril Skull getting payback for me twisting his arm to keep the Slough ring world demilitarized. I will say it felt good to see the Ophion again. I feel a lot better knowing she'll be watching our backs out there. And at the end of the day, this is a mission of exploration. Whatever doubts I have, this is right. This is what the Federation has always come back to. And it's a privilege to be a part of it. End log. Very good. All right, so as the opening log has detailed, we are going to start at Starfleet HQ. Now, those who are not uh, particularly familiar with star dates, uh, our current year is 2385. Uh, but yeah, Mirthrin, you're wrapping up some last minute things at Starfleet HQ. And I wanted to give you a little bit of time here in case you had anything in particular you wanted to cover. 
years. And actually, now that I think about it, since this is technically a new game and a new stream, why don't you give us a brief physical description of Mirthrin and anything that we should know as either uh, players or as listeners, you know, things like that. Alrighty. Well, uh, Mirth, uh, Savik Mirthrin is a Betazoid. He's about middle-aged. Uh, started off as an engineer, ended up with the rank of captain, but mostly just being by being too competent for his own good. Um, sort of served a lot on the uh, Ophion in the previous campaign, where he was basically responsible for holding the ship together, which is tricky when the ship's designed to come apart. <laughs> and has spent most of the last four years captaining a Jaeger class out in the Sabine Expanse, based around the ring world inhabited by the Slough, who... Uh, have they been accepted into the Federation by now? They have at this point, yes. And, and for those who don't know, the Slough are sort of these uh, four-limbed, hive-mind, insectoid things, and with sort of latent telepathic ability. Mm-hmm. Very good. So, uh, Mirthrin, since you are about to go on a deep space mission, are there any affairs you'd like to wrap up, you know, just in case? Also, that's not that's ominous, at all. ominous at all. Yeah. Can't think of anything off the top of my head. I mean, he probably would have already sort of given sort of <clears> last <throat> regards to his parents. Oh, oh, yes, that's the other thing I forgot. Uh, his, his adoptive parents are Vulcans. Sort of, they were the diplomatic envoys to Beta Z when his parents died in a shuttle crash. Oh right. yeah, he he probably would have already uh, sort of given a farewell and send off to them. All right. So in that case, we'll say Mirthrin, uh, you're currently waiting in one of the many sort of uh, waiting spots on the grounds of Starfleet HQ, and walking towards you is a character that most of you will recognize. Uh, it is Rear Admiral Skull, and with him is Admiral Astier. Uh, Admiral Astier is the liaison, or is sort of the premier head of... How do I want to say this? She's basically taking over for Skull in the Sabine Expanse, so she will be joining you on the leg of this mission. Uh, but Skull, if you uh, want to say a few things, this is uh, your chance. All right. Um, Admiral Skull is a uh, fully joined trill, reddish blonde hair, more white in it now than his time at Kof at at his time. Yeah, reddish brown hair with more white in it now than he had in, during his captaincy of the Ophion. Stands maybe roughly eye to eye with Mirthrin, and. Uh, he's a little older now. You can definitely see some uh, frown creases around his mouth. And his eyes don't seem to have the same wide-eye exuberance that once had. Um, I quick I stop whatever quick conversation I'm having with Admiral Astier and uh, pick up my pace and grin mirth mirthfully as I go and shake Captain Mirthrin's hand. Captain Mirthrin sort of stands up and sort of says, Admirals, and then shakes your hand. Captain, a promotion well overdue. Hmm. Yeah, well, you, could, you, you couldn't have picked a heavier responsibility to land me with on the first promotion. Uh, I, wouldn't have given, I wouldn't have promoted anyone else to the position if I didn't think they were worth it. And besides, this one has only one warp core. Granted, it's about 30 decks big, but there's only one. <laughs> Same sense of humor as ever, I see. I have to. Otherwise, the dark voices come in. And I say that with a little more seriousness than I really should. <laughs> Anyways, Admiral Astier, I look forward to... Uh, I, I thank you for giving me the F Gamma Vanguard fleet, and I look forward to having you on board the Jupiter. Indeed, right. I uh, I suspect it will be a very pleasant first journey journey for the Amalthea. Though I'm curious, has any of you seen a Cardassian recently? We're supposed to be waiting on one more before we head to the shuttle. I'm afraid I'm don't know about a Cardassian. Mm. And uh, you don't see. Uh, oh, go ahead, sir. 
You don't see them very much around Starfleet. Which I would have expected to see more during the Sabine Expanse, but mm, yeah. well, they did come out worse after all. Right, and that's when, uh, because Cardassians are a rarity, that you notice a very prolific figure heading your your direction, and uh, the Cardassian that you see comes up to you and says, "Ah, oh, uh, I believe that this is where I'm supposed to meet my ride. Uh, you are Rear Admiral Skull, yes, and Admiral Astier and Captain Murthrin." I, I am. Garrick, I believe. We met very briefly during one of uh, Ophion's stops at Deep Space Nine several years ago. Yes, we did indeed. I can see that you've kept my suit tailoring as expected, though it could use a little bit of loosening up around the shoulders, I think. I'd be more than happy to stop by your tailor shop if we have time back on Deep Space Nine. Well, I would be more than happy to do so for you. Uh, is, are we waiting on anyone else, or shall we go ahead and head on up to this Hang ship on. of yours? I'm very eager to see it. I believe that's all the passengers, so... Mm. And with that chime, I believe it's time to go. Um, I will just your Mirthrin to the shuttle. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, uh, unnamed rookie Ensign A uh, basically pilots your shuttle up to the shipyards... And, Mirthrin, this is now the very first time you are seeing the Amalthea. Uh, she takes up most of the Stardock, which is understandable, because as a Scale 7 vessel, we're talking, I think the official estimate is 1.5 kilometers long, maybe bigger, maybe smaller, but in that general ballpark. Um, you a see... little bit short, about 200 meters shorter than a Star Destroyer. Yeah. So uh, you see that currently it does have a few gantries and support beams and other sort of uh, connections to the Stardock around it. But for the most part, she looks to be a complete ship. Uh, Her engines are powered up, and you would know that as soon as you get aboard, you could launch right away if you really wanted to. Oh, she is beautiful, isn't she? And she's all yours, Captain. Well, mm-hmm. I'll be I'll be on board, of course, but I'll try to stay out of your way. I've already been uh, given the lecture of differences between admirals and captains from a certain uh, Vulcan captain. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I said it would be fun- nice to see Panek again after all these years. Indeed. I hear he's doing well, and his first officer is fi- is taking to the role admirably. I yes, said, now you get the seven whole minutes of loving shots across the hull as we come in on the shuttle. Mm-hmm. And it is uh, probably after that seven minutes that you do manage to dock, and you arrive on the Amalthea proper. Uh, Now, I do have a question for, uh, well, a couple things. Uh, The first being that who would be meeting uh, this delegation? Would it be the first officer? Would it be the security officer? Who who would be meeting them? Uh, I think we talked about a while ago that the chief medical officer, being someone that Mirthrin knows... Uh, Mm -hmm. would join the XO uh, in meeting them. Okay, so let me go ahead and get Prier on here. Uh, But yeah, uh, I don't have Astia on here because I don't really have anything planned for her, but I can if needed. But yeah, uh, Skull, Mirthrin, Garrick all step out, and waiting for them is Commander Gorteg and uh, Lieutenant Commander Prier. Uh, so why don't we start with Gorteg? Uh, sort of the same thing. If you can introduce your character, and then we'll do Prier's introduction. Well, the first obvious thing about Gorteg is Gorteg is a Klingon. Uh, he is tall, even by, or he is short by Klingon standards, but tall by human standards. Um, well built, uh, muscled. He is wearing red of security or command. Um, he is currently armed um, and when the group will come up to him he will uh, actually has a very pleasant smile 
All right. And then Preer, if you could tell us a little about a little bit about him. Sure. Uh, Jackson Preer uh, is just recently promoted to Lieutenant Commander, uh, is one of the younger ones at, I think, 32 is what I did the math at he, that he is. He is a fully joined Trill uh, to the Preer symbiote. Um, he is the chief medical officer, uh, was aboard the Ophion, helped out in the Sabine Expanse and the creation of a few star bases, and is now chief medical officer above, uh, aboard the Amalthea. Very good. So yeah, Mirthrin, Skull, you see these two lovely individuals as you step on up to them. Well, so as an all sort of step forward, uh, come on, Commander. Yes, Captain. Commander Gortig, I will be serving as your executive officer, but I'm sure you already know that. And he will extend his hand to, uh, to Mirthrin. Mirthrin will, will shake it. Pearl will uh, step forward and extend his hand. Hello, Captain. I'm going to have to get used to calling you that. I'm going to have to get used to calling you Lieutenant Commander. It's good to see you, sir. You too. It's been a while. So, uh, shall we do the tour now, or are there any orders of business we need to take care of first? Uh, well, Captain, I was told that uh, unless you had other things planned to give you the... Uh, uh, what, did, what did the space dock people call it? The Penny Tour? Out of character, is that the right term? Uh, yes. Uh, penny tour, nickel tour, dollar tour. Um, right. Yeah. So he's he's butchering it, butchering it, not on purpose. <laughs> Mithrin assumes it's a human idiom that he doesn't know. And uh, Gortegel will kind of motion for everybody to follow him, um, and uh, he'll uh, look to Skull, uh, Admiral Skull. We. Uh, we also have uh, quarters for you that I can take you to when we are done with the tour. I look for I look forward to it. And also, and also your um, yeoman or main assistant. Uh, oh yes, Commander Cam. Yes, she is difficult. Yes, she is, but she's also very effective at her job. Well, then I'm sure we will have no problems with her. Yes, I should I should remind the both of you that um, she is a chameleoid, and I have specifically ordered her never to take my face or voice. So if she happens to appear or speak with either of them, please let me know. Oh, noted, sir. Uh, so, so then that wasn't a drill. I raise an eyebrow and then I face palm. And Gorteg will just get a, a a smirk for a Klingon. Get a really big smirk. I'm just I'm kidding, just kidding at Oh, save us. It's a Klingon with a sense of humor. And Garrick actually smiles and says, I actually rather like it from my experience with Worf. It was a nice change when you could get that lovable oaf to smile. I just shake my head and assume a position at the rear of the uh, tour group. Uh, Worf's stoicism is legendary in Starfleet. Yes, that man's stoic chin could cut glass. Anyways, let us go. I, I'm sure Mirthrin doesn't need to be an empath to detect a hint of admiration. Very much so. All right, Alrighty. All right. Tour time. So, uh, I didn't want to like throw an MSD on the map and then zoom in and try to figure out where the hell you guys are. So what would be the key areas you'd like to see during this tour, just so that we have them in mind? Uh, let's see. Probably engineering, the main hangar bay where all the ships are. Probably the medical bay. Maybe, like, one of the main, like, social areas, like the Arboretum, assuming this, that's on the, actually in the thing. Okay. Let's, and finishing uh, up with the let's... command bridge. Gotcha. Let's start with engineering, because it'll let us introduce another character. So, uh, I'm not going to put your tokens on the map, but you guys do walk into main engineering, and you see that it is very different from what vessels you might have served on in the past. 
Uh, it is a strange greenish glow to the warp core. You think this is probably because we're using a sort of upgraded prototype uh, engine here on the Amalthea. Uh, but what's really important is that there is a Ferengi uh, that is coming to meet you all as you step inside. And uh, Panek, or I guess uh, Frypak, if you would care to introduce yourself. Freepak. Freepak, okay. Uh, Freepak is a pretty short, ruggy colored skin Ferengi who has a scar across his his mouth because of a blown out relay which will teach you always if you're going to buy second hand make sure you know who you're buying from all right uh captain good to meet you good to meet you as well chief uh all systems are going if you want to leave but uh i mean i would prefer a couple more days but Someone said a couple of admirals were coming aboard. Oh, just a second, just getting the cat out of the way. Well, as, well, as much as I hate to rush an engineer and a fellow engineer in his work, uh, we will probably need to head out of dock by the end of the day. She'll fly. I mean, it won't be as pretty as I'd like, but she'll dance. It'll be, uh, it'll be an impressive sight, I'm sure. <clears throat> so, and it sort of like leans over to look at the warp core. Is this, is this the prototype for the new generation of power, of warp cores? Well, I sure hope it's the one I put in, because if it's not, I made a pretty big mistake. Mm. Uh, we're still using the older generation ones when I was on the Ophion. Really had trouble getting the, the power it needed sometimes. This thing's got plenty of power. And it's got relays going everywhere, which are going to be a pain in the ass when they blow out. But M Merthrin tries to suppress a smile at that. Well, I'm sure you've got a lot to do, so unless there's anything specific you need to run by me, I will let you get back to work. No, but I definitely see a crewman I need to go yell at. No, don't put those there! Oh, later, Captain. Yep. Chief? Right. Uh, as the Ferengi wanders away and we leave engineering, you've hired a chief petty officer to lead the uh, engineering team, Captain? I find that to be an odd choice. Here, Skull from Freepok as his hearing picks this up. Yep. Maybe, but uh, I found that Ferengi are a lot are a lot more adept at managing than their rank ranks would lead you to believe. And, and Admiral uh, Freepak here, being he is so small and he does not mind confined spaces, he has been well uh, a miracle worker when it's come to the small things that have decided to break on this very large ship. Well, it's, well, it's a big ship, and we're going to be a long way from any outside help. We need an engineer with the sheer stubbornness to keep going. It's going to stomp back towards the group and kind of come right up to the to Skull and go, listen here, buddy, and then see his rank and go, I mean, sir, y you can find one of those fancy schmancy Starfleet engineers that went to your academy, but you need somebody resourceful where you're going. And that's exactly what you got. Well, you've got spunk. Enjoy your. Did you um, ever, did you ever meet a Ferengi without it? Uh, not one that was uh, uh, not a prosperous ones. It's gonna be damn sight risky on the other side of that wormhole. But as they say, riskier the road, the greater the profits. Rule of acquisition 118, I want to say. I, I meant no offense, Chief. Please, carry on. <laughs> and kind of just kind of rub my hands like clean and then walk. And on to the next spot yeah. on the tour. Up next is going to be the flight deck because it is literally one map down. 
And the flight deck, the map I have here, does not really convey the true sense of scale. Uh, this is a humongous hangar. Like, you could probably fit a Nova class or two in here, uh, side by side, easily. Uh, but the little sort of multi-level uh, walkway that you come out on uh, contains another character uh, that I'd like to introduce. So, uh, Derval, if you would care to introduce yourself. Uh, Lieutenant Junior Grade Darval is a fairly tall, slender Vulcan. Uh, he care unlike most Vulcans who have dark hair cut short. His is uh, blonde and pulled back into a ponytail. And even down here, he's wearing a set of a visor type device, which is translucent, and you're able to see several names and numbers flash by really quickly. Uh, he pays them minimal heed as he's currently uh, waist deep in looking at one of the new shuttlecraft co cockpits. He'll poke out and go, and then he'll come to attention really quick. Sir, Captain, welcome to welcome the flight bay. Please meet your lieutenant. Darval, Lute weren't you supposed to be on the bridge right now making sure Helm was good? Uh, sir, respectively, sir. The helm is functioning as it should be, at least as well as a helm could be when a ship is not moving. I found my time to be more logical down here where I could be of some assistance in co calibrating the new batch of shuttlecraft that we had just received. Uh, Sir. And, and Gortek will just kind of give that same kind of smirk again. Uh, I understand. Just by the end of the day, you need to be up in your chair. Of course, sir. I will be the one piloting the, the Amalthea on, on its maiden voyage. I That will be an honor I am looking forward to. Yep, Nazarene just sort of like sitting at the back, not saying anything, but just eyebrow raised in amusement. And Captain, if I may, um, once the ship gets underway, we will be uh, starting a uh, intramural sports league. If you are interested, um, our first sports uh, activity will be zero G volleyball. Hmm. I'm and intrigued I about that. I take it you're a bit of a sportsman then, Dava. Uh, sir, yes, sir. I have whatever activities are on the ship, I will be doing my best to take part in. And if there are no activities on currently on board, then I will find something interesting to do, sir. Well, with a crew of uh, uh, well, with a crew of fifteen hundred, I'm sure you'll always find plenty of people for the teams. Yes, sir. I look forward to starting uh, intramurals with the uh, other crews, sir. Mm -hmm. yes, that, is a, that is a point, sort of, Merthrin says as they sort of continue and sort of talking to uh, the Admiral as he goes. We, we will have to make a point of meeting the crew of the other ships at some point before we head out. Or at least the command staff. Of course, Captain. There will be several uh, opportunities to have joint meetings and get to know you brunches on our way to Deep Space Nine. It is going to be a fairly long trip. Mm. Yeah, so don't, you, you, you don't want to push the engines to full speed the moment you take the thing out of space dock? No, Starfleet engineers get kind of annoyed at that. Uh, uh, you should see I, what a Ferengi engineer get, how pissed a Ferengi engineer gets. Yeah, I remember I wasn't too pleased when you pushed the Ophion to maximum warp on our maiden trip. It was fun, though. <laughs> For the captain, maybe. You're the captain now. Oh, wait, now. that's me now. Alrighty. Yep. Um, and and b before we leave the uh, flight deck, gore will turn around to... Um, uh, to Darval. Oh, and one last thing, um, to pay back the fact that you're not at your station, can you make sure that your fighter and mine are both strapped down and ready for the voyage? Uh, sir, the fighters are under the, uh, the, the fighters are under the responsibility of Flight Deck's Officer Sona, sir. However, I will be sure to pass on that request. Excellent. Thank you, Lieutenant. Sir. 
All right. So your next destination is actually, well, I would call it next door, but it's pretty damn close to the flight deck. And there is actually a sort of glowing neon sign over the door uh, as you step in. And you see that it is named One Flew North. And it is perhaps the largest sort of 10 forward slash bar area that you guys have ever seen on a Starfleet vessel. Like, this is something that would be at home on a Starbase. Uh, obviously, there's not a whole lot of tokens here. Uh, because it would just be annoying to have to fill this space. But if you can imagine that this place is already about half full of uh, officers off-duty, uh, enjoying their drinks, enjoying some food, enjoying some social activities. Uh, but what's really important is the Horda in the corner. Uh, if, uh, Jester, if you would care to introduce your character. It's a Horda! <laughs> it's a... <laughs> Surprisingly squishy creature covered in a rocky carapace that is a silicon-based life form, which uh, eats rocks effectively, in the same way that flies eat spiders, in that it dribbles a whole bunch of acid over it and then sucks up the goopy remains. Wait, flies eat spiders? Uh, flies eat food, I suppose. I mean, if so, maybe, home, maybe they do want to this home planet. I don't know it's how flies eat food. I tried to think of a, a, a food fly would eat, and then my brain stopped working. So, yes, it is. Um, as they move forward, you can definitely see a lot of whole lot of uh, squishy, soft-looking CDI propelling it around. But the outside basically looks like a giant rock, solid, sturdy, except for the very obvious metallic artificial robot arm attached to it that allow it to work consoles and push buttons and hold the phaser. It walks forward and it says in a grunt, grump, grump, kind of inaudible grumbling sound. And there's an odd scent in the air as Hordas communicate via odors, which is then picked up and pinged by a little square-like device on it. He goes, great tanks. As sort of Mercer will sort of like get, get down and sort of look at the horter in like absolute fascination go amazing i've never actually met a horter in person okay. the robot arm salutes lieutenant junior grade rosato am i, am I sir pleasure, pleasure to, to meet you pleasure to meet you lieutenant and um with your permission and mercerin will sort of hold, hold out a hand towards the carapace you have permission yeah, and it'll sort of like just gently place a hand and sort of give a sort of telepathic hello. There's definitely a, it's orders are slightly telepathic, so it's definitely a, there was a, a response. Feels much more organic and natural in its speaking than the the crude artificial voice that it's given by the synthesizer. Yep, and then after that, they'll like stand back up and sort of. Give a more professional salute. I look forward to working. Me too. Pleasure is mine all. Mm. Goes back to fairly solid glass coated metallic bowl that it is currently slurping something out of a thick muddy like substance. All right. Up next, oh yeah, so feel free to grab a drink to sate your thirst on this uh, tour. Uh, there's probably just one more stop before we get to the bridge, because this would be where Preer sort of hops off. Uh, but Preer, uh, you're very happy to show off your brand new sick bay. As you can see, it's a, it's a doozy. You've got a hell of a lot of room in here. Welcome to my domain, Captain. Now, this is a sick bay. I tend to have to agree with you on that. It is a magnificent piece of technology. And that, is that two isolation chambers? Yes, sir. When you have 1,500 people on board, you have to be able to care for them all. <sighs> Well, they spared no expense, did they? With luck, we will never have to fill it. But if we ever have to, Prier, 
you'll do well. Is it bad that I want to see it at full capacity one of these times, just to see how well we can do? I mean, a little, yes. But you wouldn't be a doctor if you didn't want to be as useful as possible. Exactly. Well, I mean, I can schedule more trauma and crisis drills if you'd like. I can fill this thing full of people. You know... Maybe later. Oh. Very well, Doctor. And uh, can you uh, get me your readiness and your supply lists uh, by the end of the day, uh, as we talked about earlier? Absolutely. I will get on that uh, forthwith. Thank you, Doctor. And before you guys leave, leave you. Sick Bay, uh, you get your very first patient, Prier. In walks in a lieutenant holding his head and says, Doc, Doc, I, I'm sorry to bother you, but I, I've just got the, I, I think I'm coming down with Rigelian flu. Really now? Well, let's get you over here and give you a scan. All right. First roll of the game, everybody. Reason plus medicine. Difficulty one. And yes, those of you that have watched Arcadia, this is the very same Lieutenant Jensen. He's gotten a promotion. Got a promotion. Oh, oh, I have no idea who this is. This is by this accident. Is I'm go and watch that series. Yeah, it's was he promoted by accident? Probably the same way Barkley somehow got promoted. Can I use in my infectious diseases focus? <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, hey, you get a momentum. Uh, there is nothing wrong with Lieutenant Jensen. Uh, he's maybe suffering a small uh, blood sugar deficiency, but uh, yeah, there's there's nothing nothing wrong with him. Well, Lieutenant, I'm not seeing anything come up on my scans. I I I was looking at the medical database. I I just I had all the symptoms. Pause right there. Before you look at the medical database, always come into sick bay. No, 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 no. I read the report. I made sure you couldn't access the medical database from your quarters. Where are you accessing it from? I, 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 I never underestimate the resourcefulness of a Starfleet cadet who's convinced something's wrong, Commander. Uh, uh, sir, I, you said not in my quarters, so I, I just went outside and used one of the wall panels. Jensen, Jensen. go back to your quarters. Prayer physically face palms. Jensen kind of grimaces and says, uh, it, it, uh, Okay, Doc, if, if you think I'm okay. Ouch. I think you're okay. Uh, uh, okay. And and he kind of shuffles out as awkwardly as, as you can imagine. Yeah. Murphy uh, sort of watches them, watch them leave, and then sort of leans over to Gortek. I take it he's been giving you some trouble. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Yes, Captain. He'll Gortek will look at Skull. When he was transferred here, something about a returning the joke from an admiral to Han. Hmm. I, oh, yes. I am the Admiral. I'm good friends. Not sure what that joke's about. It's been several years since I saw him last. Mm. Or several years fr until I see him again. Hmm. Anyways, uh, Doctor, last uh, trick I learned from uh, now Captain Beckett, uh, a simple diluted uh, saline solution in a hypo spray. It makes a great... Um, Placebo? Precisely. I was thinking the exact same thing, Admiral. I'll make sure to synthesize a whole round of it, just in case he returns. Mm. Mind you, this is the same uh, now Captain Beckett that suggested that I f uh, flood my uh, quarters with a uh, uh, sleeping gas every time I felt stressed. So I'm not entirely sure his uh, medical expertise should be taken seriously at all times. I will tell him that you said that, sir. I'd prefer that you didn't. Priya will just smile. All right. But Mercer will sort of like a give, give of him them. a give him a salute as they leave him to his work. Okay. 
So finally we come to the big old bridge, which some of you may recognize from a certain Star Trek game. Uh, but yeah, uh, waiting for you while well, Duvall's not there. And uh, I guess our Horda... I don't know, would uh, Rosazzo be... And I'll get your name right eventually. Would he be on the bridge at this point? Sure, yeah. Okay. Doesn't take much. Uh, we would have like done a tour of a few other areas before we made it up to the bridge. Gotcha. And uh, what you're immediately going to notice, Murthrin, is that there is an ensign uh, cation that is sitting at Science. And uh, as you come in, uh, like most of the bridge personnel that notice you, uh, she sort of stands and comes to attention and sort of waits for you to, you know, tell her to be at ease. At ease, Ensign? Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Ensign Hamasi reporting for duty, sir. Uh, the <clears throat> will sort of look around at the ridge. A <sighs> little more spacious than, I, where, than I'm used to. Yes, Captain. You'll also notice that in, we've uh, replaced the traditional view screen with a three-dimensional uh, holographic display, de display deck. It serves multiple functions, especially uh, for Jupiter's main uh, purpose as a f command and control cruiser. Mm, yes, being able to visualize the fleet will be very useful. Right. Uh, speaking of which, uh, I notice we've only got the Ophion and the Lysithia out in dry dock with us. Uh, do you know when the May 1 and the Red November will be joining? Uh, they were, they're currently in uh, in Sector Zulu and will be rendezvousing with us at Deep Space Nine. Hmm, good. <clears throat> well, let's go through the standard pre-flight checks and get ready to head off at 1800 hours. Uh, 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 Gore-Tec is kind of like snapped out of his own, like, uh, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but of Trans. how big yeah, of, of how big the bridge is as well. Uh, yes, Captain. We we will be ready to go by 1800. Ready. Alright. So it's at this point uh, that with the tour at an end, uh, another crewman, uh, you know, unnamed Ensign, if he needs a name, I'll give him one. Uh, so unnamed Ensign kind of comes up, escorts uh, Garrick and the Rear Admiral off to see their quarters and uh, Admiral Astier does linger a little bit, but also goes with them as well, leaving uh, you guys on the bridge for the moment. Uh, so we're actually going to cut to the Ophion as soon as I find that bridge. There it is. Uh, so on the bridge of the Ophion, uh, you guys are doing your own pre-flight checks. And uh, Panek, if you would care to introduce yourself to those viewers at home. Uh, Panek is a rather tall, broad Vulcan with, uh, kind of salt pepper hair. Uh, very stern. Very, very stern. Uh, and he's always rigid. His back is always, his prey posture. Uh, but that's pretty much about him physically. Uh, I guess it would be okay to tell you at one point he had a split personality that Tried to murder everybody, and kind of, he's getting through that. That was dealt with, so don't worry about that. Yeah, nothing to worry about there at all. Uh, up next, uh, let's do Locke, and then we'll do uh, Quackenbush, and then we'll do Mito. Uh, Lieutenant Commander Locke is the first officer slash um, science officer of the Ophion. He's a Bolian ex uh, intelligence agency and general tinkerer happily kind of poking away at various projects and science station things as he does his job and he has a custom tricorder named Vanessa because why not very good and then uh, Bishop if you would care to introduce us to Quakenbush as a uh, lieutenant Quakenbush has uh, been a Security uh, security ensign for most of his career. Uh, started off defending a Federation outpost against a squad of Cardassians with nothing but a ornamental saber and a bar stool. And has basically gone from strength to strength from there, mostly on the strength of his mean right hook. All right. And then finally... Oh, yeah. oh, go ahead. Always there ready to fight the good fight. 
Makes him the perfect tactical officer. And up next, we have uh, Chief Mito. Chief Petty Officer Mito, oh, Odin Mito is a full telepath Betazoid. He is the operations officer, um, was on DS9, helped rebuild DS9, um, and was put forward for the position from Chief O'Brien uh, to go along with the uh, Gamma Vanguard. Gotcha. And of course, there's some other characters on uh, the Ophion that we'll meet at a later time. But for now, uh, Panek, you are just now f getting the final word that the Ophion is ready to launch from the Stardock. You have taken on your full complement of crew. Your torpedoes have been loaded to capacity. And everything checks out ship shape. Uh, Chief, hail the Stardock. Uh, let them know we are ready to release docking clamps. And when ready, gauge at one quarter impulse. Mr. Locke, have we received any communications from the Amalthia? Uh, nope, just uh, the, the occasional ping that they are ready to go when they when we say the word. Uh, some generic status updates, but nothing, uh, no formal uh, communique from the, their new captain. Very well. Once we had cleared space dock, bring us about onto their port side, shared formation, and then send them a hand. Aye, Captain. So, Signaling our readiness to depart. Yeah. So the, uh, the Ophion, uh, the docking clamps and the umbilicals sort of withdraw, and Ophion begins to glide gracefully out into space. And yeah. Uh, up next, let's cut to the Lysithia. Oh, I guess it's also worth saying uh, the Ophion is a Prometheus class if you uh, are new to the uh, to the game. Uh, the Lysithia is a Luna class. But yeah, let's let's go to the Lysithia. And we're going to start uh, with you, Captain Beckett, and then we'll go from there. All right. Uh, Captain Beckett is, uh, by this time frame, a middle-aged human, um, but he is actually getting up to his 70s um, with... Uh, dark brown hair that seems to be turning more and more gray uh, almost by the minute, uh, especially around his ears and around the, uh, the, the point of his chin. Um, he is currently in uh, still in Sciences and Medical Blue. Uh, he's the former um, and the original CMO, uh, Chief Medical Officer of the Ophion. Um, and he uh, has been doing a lot of things that have been classified as of late. Um, and other than that, it's the same Beckett everybody's seen before. Gotcha. Uh, up next, uh, I will just sort of handle these two NPCs. Uh, you have Lieutenant Sparja, who is the tactical officer. Uh, she is a being of uh, literally one of a kind. Uh, she is known as the Fryqua. And she was discovered by the Ophion crew many years ago, and she is the last of her species. And she has served with Starfleet pretty much ever since she was initially picked up and thawed out. Uh, she comes from a race that is, what did I tell you guys, 300,000 years old? Pretty old. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Uh, also the... the race that sort of performed a lot of the massive stellar engineering pro... Uh, pro programs we found scattered through the Sabine expanse. Correct. Uh, the other NPC of note is Kyrano here. Uh, Kyrano is a scorpion. As the name suggests, uh, he, his body is part scorpion, which means he takes up quite a bit of room, but, you know, uh, Beckett, through the years, has gotten uh, the engineers on his ship to sort of reconfigure the bridge a little bit, so Kyrano has plenty of room to work his console. And then let's go to Commander Tai. All right. Uh, Commander Su Tai is a 40-ish uh, year old Japanese woman. Uh, she stands at uh, martial pose whenever possible, mirroring um, Tuvox, or not Tuvox, Pinex, um, always at attention stance. Uh, she always carries with her around her 
at her thigh is a fairly large uh, sheathed cylinder that contains a retractable weapon. And she's always wearing a retractable body armor, just in case. Uh, she doubles as chief security officer as well as first officer on board the Lysithia. And uh, a quick side note, every <laughs> member of the bridge crew of the Lysithia is armed. All right. And then we have... With, with uh, the possible uh, exception of my character, because she's young and naive. Right. Um, so next up we have uh, Lieutenant Margoth, uh, if you would care to introduce yourself. Uh, Margoth is a... I would say almost... Not quite portly, but he's... It's rather rather big around the uh, middle. He's got um, a green, blue, almost brownish complexion to his skin. He's a Benzite. Uh, he's got opposable thumbs. He's got two opposable thumbs on each finger, on each hand. And um, he's fresh out of the academy. He is absolutely ready to get this going. He's, he he uh, majored in uh, everything about planetary surveying and and um, anything that the Lysithia could need in that regards. And he is stoked to be here and to help everybody. Very good. And he'll, don't mind he'll have me, I'm suggestions. Just... Go ahead. I was just say, don't mind me. I'm just fixing some tokens. I had them in the wrong places. He's got suggestions for everybody on how they could do everything better. So that won't be annoying at all. No, not at all. So uh, Beckett, the Lysithia, is already sort of waiting near Jupiter. Uh, you've actually just got a call from, well, a hail, uh, as instructed from your best friend in the whole wide world captain pinek um you you also skipped one character oh who did i skip the token you just put on the board hello oh yeah swan i'm so sorry go right ahead uh yes uh just jessamine swan is the uh, youngest addition to the crew probably fresh out of the academy within the last year or two uh she distinguished herself as a stellar cartographer, but it's her piloting skills that got her a position on the bridge crew. Uh, the advantages of growing up on a starship. And she's basically the quintessential, young, idealistic, exuberant Starfleet graduate. All right. So now you get a hail from your best buddy in the whole wide world. Captain, I'm picking up a hail from the Ophion. Very well. Put it on screen. And on Did screen you? is Mr. Panek. Captain? Uh, Captain Panek, how can Lysithia help you today? Uh, the Ophion is currently in fleet formation with the Amalthia, and we both have signaled our readiness to begin our, our movement. Is the Lysithia prepared? Uh, she should be shortly, with the next couple of minutes, and I will take up a uh, fleet flying pattern as soon as we are out of dock. Very good, Captain. Uh, it is good to see you again, Beckett. And you too, Panek. I was glad to hear that the Ophion and yourself made it through all of this mess with the Borg intact. Yes, that is... That was a troubling time for the crew and myself, but the ship is quite the... How would you say it has quite the fangs on it? We gave them a lot of trouble in the turn. That's always good to hear. Um, uh, and and again, and we'll probably go over it later, but uh, let me know if your new uh, CMO needs any help. I'm uh, overstocked on medical, um, medical personnel and combat medics, so just let me know if you need any help. I will keep that in consideration, Captain. If that is all... That is all. We will be out there as soon as uh, Dry Dock lets us get out. Connect just nods and cuts the cuts the communication. If I may, Captain. Uh, yes, Commander. Did he seem a little more cheerful than I remember? Well, whenever Panek gets to order around anyone of the same rank as him or higher, he's in a good mood. Uh, that is true. Uh, Lieutenant Swan, please ensure that the um, please ensure that the uh, warp field is operational and the impulse engines are going. 
I would not want the Ulfion to get the jump on us every time. Of course, Commander. Priming impulse engines running diagnostics now. Captain, I am sig- I am signaling space dock to release gantry way. Excellent. Go right ahead. And uh, as soon as uh, everything is cleared, Miss Swan, take us out, quarter impulse, and uh, bring us up on the uh, the opposite side of the Amalthea that the Ophion is on. All right. So now we have Mirthrin's big moment where he actually launches the Amalthea. So... <laughs> so- uh, at this point, uh, everyone who should be at their station is at their station, and Mirthrin, uh, you're this is your moment. Mm-hmm. Wish I'd practice the speech more. <laughs> oh well. <clears throat> so Mirthrin will sort of, sort of go through the checklist to sort of like get the okay from all the bridge crew. Then I'll sort of like stand there for a second, looking out at the sort of three D view screen. Uh. Gorteg will kind of break him out of his reverie. <clears throat> uh, Captain, uh, your uh, former crewmate, uh, Captain Panek, is signaling that he is ready and is waiting for us. Hmm. Open, open a hail to both ships. Aye, sir. Will, yep. I guess that's... I don't know who does comms regularly. I think it's Gorteg. I think Let's it's one of the two of us. We've got the big <laughs> station, so... Yeah, yes, we do. it's one of the two of you. So we sort of set up a three-way conference call with the other two ships. Mm-hmm. So yeah, uh, appearing uh, not where you see the hollow table, but sort of in a a the space between the hollow table and where your raised platform is, a 3D image of both Panek and Beckett appears. And Beckett will have, as soon as they come online, Beckett will have a big smile on his face, looking at Mirthrin. The more things change, the more they stay the same. As ever. It's always the three of us keeping uh, keeping Skull in a job. I'm not quite sure I follow the logic of that idiom. It's good. Oh, it's more of a... That's more the reassurance of knowing old friends have your back. Well, and well, I, and su- on I that suppose point, speech is in order. <laughs> and uh, hang on, I'm just going to get up and close the window because there's a motor mower app. Sure. You know, I was on. I was honestly worried I wouldn't be seeing a lot of old friends after the Borg invasion. But it's always nice to be proven wrong. And I sort of step forward and sort of look look more at like the room in general than at the view screen. This is the thing I've always admired about the Federation. That complete refusal to give up on the idealism time and time again this galaxy has struck us down and said you're wrong power is how this galaxy works compassion is weakness and every time the federation stood back up wiped the blood off its lips and said no you're wrong now watch us prove it well Today we set out to prove it once again. We don't really know what's been happening in the Gamma Quadrant in the ten years since the uh, since the Dominion War began, but it was always inevitable that Starfleet would return to explore it once again because that's what we are. At the end of the day, we are explorers. That's what we've always been. That's all what we always will be. So. With that in mind, Lieutenant, charter course for Deep Space Nine. Yes, sir. I am releasing docking clamps, setting course out of dry dock at one quarter impulse speed. Look forward to this journey with you all. The night is dark and full of terrors, but the sky is bright and full of stars. 
and he'll cut the communication. Yep. And it is at that point we get gratuitous shots of the Amalthea leaving space dock like the graceful space whale that it is. And I think and this I is think the perfect opportunity. <laughs> Uh, I think this is the perfect opportunity to take a five to six minute break. So if you guys could be back uh, in about five to six minutes. And remember, so I do I leave you guys uh, on during the break. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, BRB. And I am back. Also, a uh, stream, tell me, because I can't listen into the stream and obviously jam at the same time. Uh, is the ambient noise uh, too loud? Is it too soft? Is it just right? And yeah, initially I was going to do a check to get out of dry dock, but uh, I decided uh, not really needed. As we all know, the important thing is Ensign Jensen, or I guess he's Lieutenant now, Lieutenant Jensen. We must be sure there's absolutely nothing wrong with him. I think I understand why his name is Jensen now. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to the um, guy that uh, Ophion found in the vents wearing uh, one of those cloaking suits? Uh, oh, God, what was his yeah. name? I do not remember. That's uh, going to bother me now. I was going to say, anyone in chat, if you happen to know his name, 10 points to you. Uh, anyway, yeah, long I story short. Um, uh, you know, he ended up on DS9 because they were like, hey, we can make use of his obsessive need to hang out in the vents all day. Right, and when DS9 blew up... Uh, he was not among the casualties, and he's probably now on DS9 Mark II. Whether they know it or not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like, I, I can imagine he's probably on the list of people missing in action. Possibly. But he's not actually missing, he's just in a Jeffrey's tube somewhere? Mm-hmm. Who are we talking about? Oh, this is before I think uh, you joined up. <laughs> oh yeah, this is, this is one of them. 
one of the first sessions, like, well, I think it was while we were en route to DS9, uh, basically there was, like, it started off with, off, like, weird things happening with, like, the power, the power system's fluctuating, and, like, it was a sort of, like, spooky ghost in the machine episode, and it turned out what had happened was, uh, there was this one engineer who was a little bit on the paranoid side. Happy he, Lieutenant Thomas, apparently. Yep. Thomas. Ah, yes. That, was, that sounds right. And he'd taken to just sort of sleeping in the Jeffrey's Tews of the Ophions during its construction. And because he didn't really communicate with anyone, no one realized that he was, like, snoozing on the Ophion when it went out of dry dock. And being the paranoid person that he was, he immediately assumed that the ship had been stolen by Romulan operatives who were all dressed up to pretend to be Starfleet officers in order to steal the ship, and he'd been sort of hiding in the superstructure of the ship, trying to subtly sabotage the power systems ever since we left. Gotcha. I remember that episode now that you say that. Mm-hmm. All right. So uh, I think we have most people part, part of the reason why the Prometheus had so much, it, how much power trouble initially. Yeah, it, it was uh, it was the whole thing. Um yeah, I think we have most people back, so let's go ahead and jump back into it. So during this transit between DS or between Earth and DS9, you guys have the opportunity to mix and mingle and meet as much as you would like. And I do want to give you guys a you know a bit of time here to basically do that. But if you would prefer to just skip ahead to DS9 Mark II, we can do that as well. Um, for the most part, Skull is just going to be with himself in his quarters um mm-hmm. he's he's going to wait until the whole fleet's assembled before actually coming out and doing much socializing okay um meanwhile yeah so uh did anyone else want to have a meeting say with between cmos between engineers things of that nature or is that going to wait until the entire fleet's sort of together I mean, I have a scene with my medic just by herself, but that can always wait. Yeah, let's let's save that. Let's let's do group things as much yeah. as we can because that's what's probably important of for course. this opener. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, Lieutenant Darval is going to constantly take his role as a fleet uh, control and constantly send uh, update messages between the Jupiter or the Amalthea. T- and the Ophion and the Lysithius Helms. Mm-hmm. Uh, just saying, this, please adjust position as follows. Um, Miss Swan, you are getting a little too close. Please do not intermix the warp fields. They are separate for a reason. This is not a fighter class ship you're flying now. Rather than just sort of sitting there easy to... Uh, I wonder how long, though, it'll take before Mirthrin's ha- habits from engineering start making the bridge crew jumpy, because uh, jumpy, because he doesn't actually sit in the captain's chair. He stands. He strikes me as the type of captain who paces. Oh, yeah. It's like, not like restless pacing. He just, like, he stands, usually with his arms lightly folded, and just sort of strolls around the bridge, sort of keeping at tabs on everything. Something wrong with your chair, Captain? Should I notify engineering? Uh, well, y- you know what? I'll, I'll get back to you on that. I'll, I'll I'll make a point to try it at some point. I mean, Captain, it, it, it is a lovely chair, and if it will support my weight, I'm sure it will support yours. <laughs> Maybe later. Got a lot of got a lot of restless energy to burn off at the moment. Well, uh, Captain, while I was on the Amalthea waiting for you to uh, come aboard, I took to taking laps around the ship. It seemed to help while waiting for reports from a Ferengi engineer that doesn't like giving reports. Hmm. I must make a point to join you for one after I go off shift. Uh, Commander Gortag, sir. If I may inquire, what is your average uh, 
what is your preferred lap route, and have you been keeping track of your times? No. As a matter of fact, I haven't. Uh, I haven't taken to running it yet, just walking it. But maybe you and I can start doing uh, early morning calisthenics of running the ship. I look forward to it, Commander. Sir. Uh, Captain, we are on course, on, and aside from the... Uh, Aside from the occasional merchant traffic or passing starship, we have a clear route between us and Deep Space Nine. Excellent. Uh, you know what? The helmsmen on the other ships uh, probably also have a fair bit of air energy to burn off. Uh, let's say we uh, dial the speed up half a warp factor. Yes, sir. Increasing to warp factor 8.5. Advising fleets to do the same, after giving us a slight head start, of course, sir. <laughs> so, yeah, the, Engage. Uh, the ships all increase. Stars start to fly by a little bit quicker. But everything seems to be working, which is what matters. Uh, everything is green across the board on the Amalthea, as it is on the Lysithia and on the Ophion. Tactical systems, port ready, although not armed. And the ship feels stable, it's in test. No unnecessary shaking. <laughs> you'll get, a, you'll get a, a hail from engineer. Captain, Captain Mathurin here, go ahead. Is there a particular reason you're in a hurry, Captain? No, just uh, enjoying the trip. Well, I enjoy my engines working at peak efficiency, so next time, how about a bit of a heads up? <laughs> I stand chastised. Mm-hmm. They say trouble comes in threes, Captain, so watch it out there. Well, tr trouble never has any trouble finding Starfleet, that's for sure. Prayer will come up onto the bridge with his report for uh, things that he needs to uh, still needs. Sure. <laughs> Howdy, everybody. Doctor. For real? Wow, Mirthrin. Your bridge is almost the size of the Ophion. <laughs> it is exceedingly large. It, it is triggering my agoraphobia. Uh, all right. Yes, of course. Uh, is is that the report I asked you for, Doctor? Yes, Commander. I figured I'd uh, deliver it in person. We haven't had too much need to have me in sick bay quite yet. You get a chirp on your com badge. <clears throat> this is prayer. Uh, sir, you wanted us to tell you if a certain lieutenant came in again? <sighs> uh, doctor, if I were you, I would just lock him in one of the isolation chambers, tell him it's, and Gorteg will, air quotes, good for him. That's tempting, Commander. I'll keep it in mind when I visit him. Uh... Here's the report, and I hand it to you. Also, uh, Captain, I was wondering if uh, we could collect all the chief medical officers uh, on our journey over to DS9, make sure that we are all on the same page, and we can see our whole inventory of what we have. Well, that's the idea. We'll have, we'll definitely have time when we stop over at DS9 to rendezvous with the other two ships in the fleet. Let's organize a. Uh meeting in one of the conference rooms for them. Understood, sir. Prayer to Medical Bay, I am on my way. Lieutenant Commander, if I may, I sir? Sir? Yes, sir. Oh, I'm no sir. I'm Lieutenant Junior Grade. And I point at my pips. Um, it's my understanding that hyper hypochondriacs are often... They often have far too much spare time. If I may suggest that you recommend that he get a strict regimen of physical activity, preferably on the holodeck, 
I could recommend several surfing programs. I will keep that in mind, however. Uh, for some reason, I feel like he will somehow figure out a way to injure himself, even if the safeties are on in the hollow deck. Well, and half the fun, sir. <laughs> Gortek will kind of chuckle. And Doctor, if he gives you too much trouble, um, maybe these runs that uh, Lieutenant Darval and I have talked about, maybe we'll force him to go, I mean, ask him to come with us. Get some of that energy out. That sounds like a wonderful idea, Commander. I will pass your suggestion on to him. And if he doesn't like it, let me know if it needs to be more than a suggestion. Noted. If there's nothing else up here, I'll get back to the medical bay. Alright. Ophion, please adjust heading point zero zero three mark four. You are uh, you are coming a little too close. Please maintain formation flying. All right. Lysithia, main co maintain course and heading. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's a thematically appropriate amount of yeah. time later. Uh, but let's go ahead and cut to DS9. So, uh, at DS9, uh, for those of you that are perhaps expecting to see the old station, uh, well, you don't, because the old station got blown up a few years ago and they've had to build a new one. Uh, the new one is pretty much what you see on the screen, as you can see. It's a, I guess you would call it a more quote-unquote complete design. Uh, it doesn't have pylons that uh, sort of terminate halfway up. They connect all the way. Uh, but strangely, this means that it actually has more docking points. It, it seems backwards, but it actually does. Um, the important thing is that waiting for you guys uh, as the fleet is both the Meiyuan and the Red November. Now, the Meiyuan is a uh, Steam Runner class vessel. It has been outfitted with some of the latest bells and whistles in the warp department, including experimental QSD. And the Red November, for those of you that recall the Ophion episode, uh, is a sort of experimental, well, no longer experimental, uh, hollow ship, meaning that it can run itself as a hollow deck pretty much 24-7. Uh, but right now, you have crews on each, and they sort of welcome hail you as the fleet drops out of warp and sort of takes up station keeping around DS9. Yeah, Mirth will sort of <clears throat> smile a bit when he sees the Red November sort of docking around the deep, around Deep Space Nine. Uh, it is good. It is nice to see that ship back to its original purpose as a medical frigate. Yeah, and so Ooh, Rear Admiral Skull uh, walks onto the bridge at this point. Nothing. He doesn't say anything. He's just sort of just standing in the corner, just watching. Always watching. Mm -hmm. All right. Sand Standard Hails. I acknowledge, Captain. Deep Space Nine, this is the USS Amalthea, USS Ophion, and USS Lysithia. Requesting... Well... You probably do not have docking clips enough, large enough to handle the Lysithia, but Ophion and Lysithia would request docking. I got what you meant. Yeah. Uh, if my research is correct, uh, on screen appears one Captain Lo Ro Laren, and you see that uh, she is Bajoran, if you're not familiar with her character from TNG. And, uh, you know, she actually looks good in uh, Command Red and with her rank, and she says... Ah, uh, yes, welcome, Gamma Vanguard. We were expecting you. Uh, tell me, was your journey here uneventful? Indeed it was. Wonderful. Well, as you might expect, we have some last-minute items to impart to you. you. Of course, you are free to come aboard the station at your leisure. But I do also have orders here that you are to drop off. Oh, you have Garrick with you, don't you? Indeed we do. Well, just make sure that he's actually off the ship, because the last time, eh, it's not important. Uh, we uh, also understand yeah. that you have Admiral Astier with you, yes? Uh, yes, she'll be taking over as the uh, resident admiral for the Speen Expanse, I believe. Uh, that is what I have on my reports here as well. Uh, if you could send her over as well, that would be excellent. 
And if there's anything else you need, captains, please let me know. Oh, we'll be sure, we'll be sure to let you know. Uh, Ophion and Lythsithia, you are cleared to dock. Uh, Merth Merthrin to Hangar Bay. Uh, prep the Roper for sh for transport to DS9 for all personnel wanting wanting leave on the station. And Sona, uh, your <laughs> android reports, of course, sir, right away. Uh, Captain, uh, should we disembark combat air patrol with the fighters? Or do you think being near the station, they will not be needed? <clears throat> oh, this close to DS9, I'm sure we'll be fine. Very well, sir. I will keep a squadron on standby just in case. Oh, well, we're always sensible when the captain's off the ship. Set up the Amalthea in a holding pattern two kilometers outside station orbit. Yep. Aye, sir. Entering station keeping orbit. So as uh, the fleet sort of gets into position, starts to take on <laughs> supplies and personnel, uh, we do have a few scenes that were requested. So the very first scene is actually going to be between Beckett and Quark. So, Beckett, I don't know if you'd actually go to Quark's or if you would just do him on the view screen, but, uh, yeah, Quark has requested a meeting with you. Oh, no. No, 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 no. I'm going to him. Okay. I have paid that he has not paid up. Ah, well, you should bring that up with him. Uh, but anyways, uh, when you get to the new Quark's, because Quark's had to be rebuilt because, you know, old station kablooey, uh, you see that it is now a five-story establishment. It is big. Uh, I would say at least 2.5 times the size of the old Quarks. And you can see that he is doing tremendously well for himself. Uh, it is a opulent bar. And you can see that there's all manner of individuals in his place. Uh, even Morn. Even Morn is there. Wonderful. Uh, I uh, Beckett will walk in to Quark's um, and walk straight to the bar and sit down uh, about middle... Nah, who am I kidding? I'm going to sit next to Morn mm -hmm. and uh, wait for Quark to come by and actually will tell any of the other bartenders or wait staff that I would like to talk to Quark. Okay. So uh, as they try and find Quark, Morn opens his mouth to speak, but then Quark sidles on up to you and says, Ah, yes, hello, Captain Beckett. Ah, uh, what do I owe this pleasure? Well, you, what you owe for this pleasure is the back money of our contract that you have not paid. Uh, I understand about the ship being destroyed, or the station being destroyed, and you need to be rebuilding, but... And Beckett will kind of turn and put his arm up to this now five-story establishment. You seem to have done well. And now I need to be paid. Well, you will be happy to know that I have invested your money, and it is actually earning a very good percentage interest rate. Really? So, what happened to all the back pay for this oh. contract. Oh, it's all in the same slush fund. <sighs> but it's not in my fund or my account. Well, let's be honest, Captain. You're not going to need it where you're going, so I thought I'd invest it for you. Well, it's funny because I came here to ask you to invest it, but in something else. So, unless it's what I'm thinking it is... You're going to need to pull all that money out and put it somewhere else. So he actually just kind of pulls out a pad and looks at you expectantly. Let me see. And you and, uh, you take the pad and you can make up where it is or I can tell you where it is at the moment. Uh, I actually, Beckett was going to come to him and ask him to deposit it into um, like basically like an orphanage orphanage fund for the people who lost parents during the Borg invasion and things like that. Okay. Uh, at this point then, yeah, you're seeing that he has invested you in Tulaberry stocks. It's actually doing quite well. You're you're getting something about 2.3% uh, on your investment, which is actually quite substantial. Hmm. 
Um, so, though I don't mind tulip berries, uh, here's what I want you to do. You're going to put the profit made from this every month into, and Becca will pull out a, a little, like, isolinear chip, mm -hmm. into this account, which is the Federation, uh, into an account for the Federation, for all of the orphans and widows and relief funds for what happened with the Borg. Now, that is what I want. And seeing as how you owe me some back money, let's say we change the original contract, which I believe was 7030U. That is correct. So until you pay me, what I am owed, we're going to change that to 6040 me until that is paid off, and then we will switch back to 5545 you. I'll go no lower than 6535. 6535 me until you're paid off, and then we will switch to 6535 you. Done. And he sort of holds out the pad for you to put in your signature or the equivalent thereof. And I'll, uh, uh, I will also, uh, put my thumbprint on it to, to, uh, agree to the terms. And then I will tell him, uh, I would also like a, uh, well, my, my normal stock that I come and get from you of what I leave behind to take with us on this journey. I don't think that'll be a problem, will it? Nah. <sighs> I'll just tell the stock boys to stop slacking and get to work. Sounds wonderful. And, uh, I don't think we're going to be here too long, so you don't have to worry about me or now Admiral Skull taking all of your money from the Dabo table or your Dabo girls, for that matter. Ah, yes, I hear he has a wife now. Yes. Yes, he does. And Beckett will kind of look a little sad, like he's lost his wingman. Um... And uh, then he'll just order something to drink from from Cork and some food. Gotcha. And one small note that you may or may not have noticed, when you signed uh, that pad, you immediately noticed that there was a transfer into your account. So Cork literally paid you the second that contract was signed again. Uh, of course, to, to pay me off so that way it goes back to being 6035 him. Yep. Got it. All right. So with that going on, uh, the other requested scene, uh, Prier, you're currently meeting with all of the medical personnel. So uh, any other CMOs on other vessels, you can free free to feel free to jump in on this conversation. Uh, but you get a hail from the station, and it is uh, Doctor Crusher to Lieutenant Commander Prier. Please come in. This is Prier. Hello, Doctor Crusher. How are you doing? I'm doing wonderful. Uh, I understand that you are currently meeting with the fleet's medical personnel. Is that about right? Yes, we were just getting ready to begin. Excellent. Uh, would you prefer if I came and joined you? Not at all. I would enjoy seeing you again. Very well. I will be there shortly. And sure enough, about 15 minutes later, uh, in walks uh, Dr. Beverly Crusher. And she has a very warm smile on her face, and she sort of shakes uh, your hand and anyone who comes to meet them. And we'll say for sake of argument that uh, Beckett, as a former uh, CMO, you're there as well. Sounds great. And I'll, I'll show up with, um, I believe, the Lysithia's new CMO. That'd be Scrim, I think that was me. Mm -hmm. I think we introduced it. Yeah, let, me, uh, let me actually start throwing some tokens around here so that we can uh, start putting uh, faces to names make it a little bit easier for both us and the stream alike so let's see all right so theater of the mind all right so we've got prayer uh we've got scrim who apparently i need to fix his token well i'll do in a moment uh we've got scrim for the lysithia we have beckett for the lysithia uh let me see on the ophion remind me who it was on the ophion uh cal heavy ren Okay. Ah, yes, I remember her. And I think that's everyone represented, yes? 
Well, besides Crusher, but she doesn't have a token. Yeah, I think we're good. All right. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, so, uh, after everyone says hello to each other and uh, everyone is situated, uh, Dr. Crusher actually speaks first and says, I, I hope you don't mind, uh, Lieutenant Commander, but I have brought a pad that contains something that you might find interesting. And she kind of hands it over to you. And you see that on the pad, uh, you are actually not currently stocked on, uh, what is it, biomimetic gel, which is kind of important for your fleet for many reasons. Ah, thank you, Doctor. I was realizing that our stocks of uh, the biomimetic gel were not present Do you guys have any on uh, DS9 that you would be able to give us? Oh, of course. Uh, the only problem is is that I either need to see an official requisition form or the good captain here would have to order it. Uh, I think that that can be arranged. And uh, uh, Beckett will just stick out his hand for, for the pad that she's... or the pad that they're uh, passing around. Mm -hmm. And uh, he will put in a formal request for it for the Gamma Vanguard. Gotcha. So, uh, Crusher smiles again, takes the pad, and says, Very well, we'll have it to you before you leave. Um, other than that, that's that's all I, I, I really had. i just happy to see you again, Preer. It's always a lovely time seeing you, uh, Dr. Crusher. How is your life going? Well, you know, hectic with the whole Bashir situation, but we're making do. Yes, I that's can. good to hear. How are yes. the Bajorans? Well, the Bajorans are, shall we say, being Bajoran. Uh, let's just say that uh, I've had to already butt heads with uh, our new captain of DS9 a few times. I have heard that she is fairly uh, stubborn, but That's passionate. one word for it. Passionate's another. Oh, but come on, Beverly. You've dealt with stubborn captains before. Right, but with Jean-Luc, I at least had a rapport. I don't have that with Rolaren. I mean, you could do what I did as, as, as a commander working with stubborn captains and just threaten to relieve them of duty whenever they, you know get out of line, and he'll say with a smirk. Ah, but if you uh, use that trick too much, they get used to it. Hmm. Well, the trick is figuring out the right amount. Yes. I believe she's also married to the captain, if I recall correctly. Doesn't that give her additional privileges? Well, not on this station she's not. Well, that's true. I mean... Sorry, Doctor. Um, I forget my place. No, of course, Lieutenant. I don't mind in the slightest. <laughs> Still, so, if you could find out who... If she has a relationship with someone, perhaps you could... I'm speaking a little too much and out of turning. I'm sorry. I, you're... Hmm. Hmm. So... Uh, we'll say at that at that point, uh, you guys actually start to get into the minute of uh, what you have on board, what you need to bring over in terms of supplies and personnel. Uh, you sort of do a shallow deep dive, if that makes any sense. Mm. Grim would like to make a request. Of sure, Peter. what you got? So, uh, Lieutenant Commander, it's Grim being a kind of pushing middle-aged Rigelian, who has only recently decided to become a Starfleet a doctor. So very experienced in medicine and other things. Not much in Starfleet. Yes, Lieutenant. What can we do? Your ship is significantly larger than the, the Lysithia. Much more cargo space. Uh, and I know it has a, a fairly substantial arboretum. Be particularly useful if we could set up some sort of greenhouse for that there. All kinds of so we'll probably need to bring in some soil samples while we're in the Alpha Quadrant. Something so we can plant seedlings and get some supplies from the Gamma Quadrant. I'm sure there's all kinds of botanical wonders there that we can use 
for medical purposes. I had a thought along the exact same line there, Lieutenant. Um, I've been talking to the botanists uh, on board, and they are also in agreement that we should uh, be prepared to take samples uh, for exactly that reason. Uh, they are preparing a section of their um, arboretum as well as their laboratories that uh, are going to be used in that way. I've done what I can with the Lysithia, but there's only so much space on that ship. You, there's nothing but space. <laughs> you want to talk space? The Ophion only has two bio beds. It's very cramped, especially if I keep Seamus active more, more, more and more. I'm trying oh, to I'm, teach him how to sing. But oh, I'm Seamus? I'm fully aware of how small the Ophion, uh, Ophion sick bay is. And who's Seamus? Is Vara not your assistant? Oh, no, uh, Seamus is the EMH. I've uh, named him. He works better with a personality. What? Why? <sighs> Why would you activate the EMH? Yeah, like, even Crusher's looking at you like, you're crazy. What? That's what you've worked with. Because I've found that EMHs are often fairly handy to have around, and given enough time to let their nascent personality develop, they can become very good friends, or at least good resources. And then I don't know everything, so it's nice to have some uh, human inter or uh, organic ish interface to learn from rather than poking at a terminal all day. Oh, I found it you... works best if you delete the voice subroutine and oh, just have to hold things. You, you sweet, sweet summer child. <laughs> I'm trying to teach him how to sing so he can at least uh, teach me in a way that I can best learn, but alas, he does a very, very poor bass. <sighs> Oh, uh, I, I, he, Beckett looks at, at Crusher, I, I, do, do they not teach doctors how to be doctors in Starfleet Medical anymore? They, they, they did when do. I graduated last year. Doctor, unlike you, I've learned to use every tool at my disposal, rather than w pushing potential assets away out of, um, some hidebound traditions of um, pride and uh, stoicism. I've, le I've learned to accept help from wherever I can get it. And by the way, I tap the wearable tricorder on my face. I've noticed that your blood pressure has shot up 10%. Might I recommend that you uh, practice some breathing exercises? Uh, I, am, I am quite healthy and well, thank you very much. I believe the rise in blood pressure is due to the fact that a uh, young lieutenant uh, is using the EMH more for being a doctor than herself. But I disagree, sir. Everyone we has. To... We agree to disagree. Well, next time there's a uh, medical emergency on the Ophion, I invite you over to watch me work, so to speak. Uh, I I would love to, and maybe I need to have a talk with Paneka about running you through a. Uh, uh, holodeck simulation I had on the Ophion of how to practice medicine without any power. It's always fun when you actually have to do stuff by hand. Sir, all respect, I dealt with massive pl triage plague situations on several colonies that were wiped out from the Borg. I am very, very capable of doing what I, what I can with what I have. Well, then I'm glad to hear it. And speaking of which, uh, one thing Scrim may have missed to uh, bring up is due to what the Lysithia was doing during the Borg invasion. Uh, we are well stocked on people that are um, medically trained, uh, either as EMTs or uh, even just um, physicians' assistants. So if we get to that point, let us know and we can definitely send medical teams to help with any crisis. I think it would be a good idea for all of the crews to compose a list of those who are medically inclined uh, in their informa uh, in their knowledge in case of an emergency such as that. I, I agree. Agreed. Uh, I will make sure that I pose it to the Admiral and let him know of what the four of us have decided. Um, and I believe we are still using the November is going to be, I mean, other than the fact that from what I've heard, Dr. Prayer, your sick bay makes the rest of ours look like a field tent. 
pretty sure uh, we can fit the entire Ophion into his. Uh, it's yeah, it, I'm I'm sure it is, but uh, I I believe the November is set up to be a crisis ship, so um, we I think we should be okay between all of our ships and it. But I'll bring it up to the Admiral when we have our captain's meeting. That is good to hear there, Captain. Uh, if you guys would like to see my medical bay, you are welcome to follow me down after our meeting. However, now it comes time of we need to figure out what to do in our downtime. Uh, As doctors, you mean? We have downtime. Well, we have to have in my time on the uh, rebuilding the Rysian colonies, I picked up several uh, beach activities. I'm a, I enjoy swimming and surfing and all sorts of sand-based activities. You know, for an Afrosian that likes it kind of cold, it's the warm weather suits me. Noted. Luckily, our holodecks have that ability. I was thinking more along the lines of card games. Oh, you mean... Oh, yes, yes. Well, I'm... The doctors played me nine... The doctors taught me nine-card poker once. I grew up on a freighter, so played a lot of cards with the family. Long, long trips between star systems at Warp 3. I could show you some Rigelian Snap. Uh, I'm fairly... confused with Rigelian Clap, which is, as you say, a horrible condition. Yes. Uh, I, uh... I'm fairly certain that uh, uh, Admiral Skull still probably owes me money from the last time we played cards on the Ophion, but uh, I'm not going to bring it up to him. Captain, I take that as a challenge that now we, you and I have to square off to see who owes each other money. Uh, I, I look forward to the challenge, and I just kind of like like throw a glance to, uh, to Crusher. Um, yeah, when you get to be a doctor, as long as we have you, poker faces usually pretty good. Hmm. And uh, with that, let's actually go ahead and do the captain's meeting. So let's see. So Captain Beckett, you're already there. Let's get Panek on here. Uh, let's get Murthrin on here. And then I have to find what I did with Skull. There's Skull. So yeah, uh, you guys are... Actually, you know what? I think I have a conference room for this. I know I've got a conference room for this. Hold on. Yes, there it is. All right. So uh, the four of you are going to meet in the Almatheus conference room. And I'm going to let you guys uh, run your own meeting. I'm assuming the other captains are there too from the other ships? Yes, I have yeah. deliberately not named the captain of the Mei Yuan and the Red November because I'd like it to be something we come up with together. Uh, but you can assume that they are present. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. There's a whole bunch of new characters getting introduced in this first session. Let's not front load at all. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Captains, welcome to the first inaugural meeting of the Gamma Vanguard fleet. Um, I know, um, uh, Mirthrin, you're, despite Skull putting up a good front, you realize that their, your empathic sense is picking up that he doesn't have a lot of good news to speak about. Oh dear. Yes. I take, um, I'll look at the other captains. Okay. Your journeys here to Deep Space Nine was uneventful? Excellent. Right, to business. Uh, Admiral Estrella, just before she left, she gave me an update to our uh, mission into the Gamma Quadrant. Um, our first mission into the Gamma Quadrant is that of exploration. Um, we have pretty much free reign to go wherever we want, so long as it is not towards Dominion space. Um, my current suggestion is that we, as a fleet, head coreward. And then once we get you know, into some suitably dense systems, we all split off and perform separate in separate exploration roles. Uh, so then I take it the fleet standing order is to avoid the Dominion at all costs? Uh, precisely. We're not going to... 
Um, if they challenge us to our to a fight, we are to avoid the fight for as much as possible and only fight back once they attack first. Um, if we do meet them in peaceful terms, I am authorized to at least begin at least a, an attempt at diplomacy. But uh, according to my in according to Starfleet intelligence, the Dominion's borders are closed, so I'm finding that highly unlikely. Our best bet is to head in head a different direction and see what else is out there. On a mm. s yep. what what is their operational distance from the Amalthea? Well, given that the Ophion and the Mayun have QSD, I would prefer that they stay at least stay at maximum uh, two days travel, preferably less, because. If the Mayun or the Ophion run into trouble, we can't get to you. Oh, through QSD. Starfleet has yet to figure out how to get a QSD drive onto something this massive. But, uh, uh, yes? Uh, speaking of ships and their uh, special toys, uh, seeing as how we're not in the Alpha or Beta Quadrant, I take yes. it... You can cloak uh, if you want to. Thank you, Captain. Or Admiral. <laughs> I really wish you'd stop calling me Captain. It's been four years. I understand. Uh, <laughs> on another note, I'm afraid I have some bad news from our previous sector. I'm just going to slide a pad down to each one of the captains. Roughly two days ago, the... Uh, the Breen and the Romulans made a strike at the uh, Pandora's Gate. Um, the USS Connecticut and the USS Aegis were lost in its defense. And the Breen, were, while destroyed, they were managed to beam down some special uh, shock troops on into the gate itself. They deployed some sort of exotic particle bombs that weakened the field significantly. Only small ships can get through if they wish. On the plus side, Beckett, you don't have to worry about those planet killers coming through. Um, out of character, has the Adiona come back? Uh, nope, the Adiona has been declared lost in action. Um, they've been... Um, they were attempting to make first contact with a species called the Muwat, I believe. And after that, Communication ceased. Uh, Starfleet uh, is not sending any more ships through. Uh, the only ship going through is a Nova class uh, vessel, which is only going to send uh, probes uh, into the Andromeda galaxy for now. Hopefully, the crew of the uh, St the Starfleet uh, the Starfleet Corps of Engineers will figure out how to repair the portal, but. That gateway is, for the moment, closed. At least operationally. And the bad news on that is... That is what the Admiral is going to be doing, is using this as a probable excuse to further bolster Starfleet's presence in the Sabine Expanse. Now it makes sense. Why yes. have the Romulans and the Breen done such a thing? What is their reasoning behind it? It's hard, it's hard for us to assume what the Typhon Pact is really thinking. Um, they probably noticed a number of uh, Starfleet ships in the area paying close attention to whatever was beyond, so they decided to send a strike force. The other possibility is that they've decided that they've somehow infiltrated systems and have gained knowledge of the Pandora's Gate. Either way, it's a strike into newly claimed Federation territory, and Starfleet is not going to allow it. They haven't called it an act of open war, because in doing so, they would have to... We'd have to acknowledge the Pandora's Gate existence. Which, we're not ready to do that yet. Surely the Ophion and the fleet would be better distributed defending that. <laughs> Starfleet believes that we're a little too close to the situation um, and has dangled a, a carrot of exploration in front of us. Their 
they've because of a uh, because of myself and Captain Murthrin, um, ple- basically sending um, pleas for non-militarization. They've decided to group us all together once again and send send us far away, where this new where we can't directly in- intervene or have input into this new militarized Sabine Expanse. Makes sense that either pulling us away, seeing as how... <sighs> yeah. And Beckett, Beckett will just trail off. Yes. So, needless to say, they've... The, the whole point, off the record, the whole point of the Jupiter ship, or the Jupiter-class vessel, is both a show of military uh, capability and a unspoken declaration of Starfleet's insistence that we in- that we keep exploration at the forefront of our um, of the forefront of our mission. It would have been easy to deploy this carrier ship and a small and a tactical fleet into the Sabine Expanse as a good show of force, but it would have been adding flint to an already dangerous situation. So, they've built this ship. We're making a good show of force at Deep Space Nine, and then we are effectively being taken away from Starfleet's overall military strength for the foreseeable future. Yeah, get rid of the only people to actually know about Pandora. Yep. Precisely. New eyes, new ideas. Who knows? Could be good. Could hope. And I'm... And... But I look at Murthrin. Don't worry, Murthrin. The treaty to keep um, Veth to keep settlements off of the Slough homeworld is still going to be in effect. But uh, it does that's not. Good, it, uh, that's it, one good thing, at least. It does not, however, impact uh, nearby uh, space stations. So I suspect we'll have a, if not a full star base, we'll have a station of some sort. Orbiting a ring world? Can you actually orbit something that's already orbiting something? Whatever. Uh, whatever. The orbital mechanics can get a little complicated, but it's doable. <laughs> Fair enough. Anyways, um, I'm here to introduce you to uh, my newly acquired uh, fleet uh, staff. They have per- um, chain of command for the fleet. If if a crisis happens, each co- each captain is, of course, in command of their own vessels. Um, should something happen to the captain, their first officer will take over. And should something happen with the first officer, it is up to each captain to uh, decide, but preferably ahead of time, if they wish to defer chain of command to a different captain or command crew. Um, I... Should the should it come to it, um, whoever is in command of the Amalthea has operational command of the fleet. Should it need it, and I'm just going to slide some other pads along to each each captain. I'd like to introduce you to my staff. Um, these are these report to me, unless they're on your ship during a crisis, in which case they should defer to you, unless they're specifically ordered to do otherwise. Uh, the first, uh, these pair, Gene and Nora Roberts, uh, they are fleet logistics, engineering, and communication specialists. Um, sorry, out of game, uh, GM, do we have quantum communications to us, or how does that work? So, my research into this indicates that uh, you do not actually have uh, what is referred to as the Midas array communication. Um... It was specifically designed to contact the Delta Quadrant. And while the Lysithia had something uh, similar to communicate back with uh, the uh, the Sabine Expanse outposts, uh, you guys aren't going to have anything like that where you're going. Um, I will say, for sake of argument, you were able to recover the sort of bonded pair that lets you remotely sort of pilot and do whatever with the Red November. And that entire interface is on the Amalthea. Good to know. All right. All right. Um, Nora's, Nora's 
a quantum communications whiz. Uh, so what her one of her assignments is to attempt to cr recreate this quantum link with other ships, just in case. Um, it'd be nice if we could figure out how to tie it back to Starbase or Starfleet Command back at Earth, but she can't be in two places at once, sadly. Um, uh. I will open up. Uh, well, Beckett will say, uh, and by all means, send her over to have her. Uh, uh, tear through the Midas pods that are on the Lysithia. Um, maybe that'll help her out. Of course. Uh, the next name on the list is Fleet Intelligence Officer Lieutenant Commander Drake. Uh, he's in charge of fleet security. Uh, all uh, He will be stopping by and working with your tactical officers, chief security officers, uh, just, in, just ensuring overall fleet security f from an E-War perspective. Also, if we were to encounter the Dominion, um, he will he and his Marines will ensure that or perform uh, anti-founder sweeps just in case. Hopefully, it doesn't happen. But we are going to be operating alone, far away, so it's best to be on the safe side. Any questions? I have none, Captain. Murthrin, you've been oddly quiet. Yeah, and so you, you sort of see Murthrin sort of just got a bit of a sort of had a bit of a frown on his face for most of the briefing. Hmm? Oh, so, sorry, just uh, stewing over the details. Yes, I'm yes. not going to lie. I can't help but feel that I'm being set up to fail. But I've, in my uh, attempts at being a, a passionate supporter of the Sabine Expanse, I've alienated my fair share of brass, and my I can't help but feel that they're watching my every move out here. So, so. I ask well, that... That is, that is the nice thing about being set up for failure. It yeah, is very satisfying when, when you win regardless. <laughs> There's the spirit. And, and Mithrin, you see Mithrin does actually sort of give a quirk of a smile. That is the other side of the question, of course. Uh, that the same people who are interfering in the Sabina Spans aren't going to be able to s uh, interfere with how we represent the Federation out there. Nope. Nope, we can make our own Federation. It'll be a better Federation. With Blackjack and Dabo. <sighs> Sorry, bad pun. Um, please, um, do not, please do not talk about the Admiral's secessionist tendencies. Uh, Beckett will lean over to Panek. Has he been like this the whole time I've been gone? In my appearance, in my experience, he tends to rabble a lot more. I believe you are a calming effect. Hmm. Well, good to know one of us is, right? Hmm. Um, in the meantime, uh, Captain Beckett, um, the Red November is, go is going to serve two tasks on this two primary roles on this vessel in this fleet uh, the first is going to be its medical capabilities um, in case of a f in case it's needed to perform its medical duties um, it the organic crew is going to be transported off it will be uh, barian sweeped to clear off any organic particles and then a holographic crew is going to take over in which case as you're the ca captain with the most medical experience I'd like it to fall under your command if necessary. You, you you, really are putting me in charge of a ship full of EMHs. More like coordinating them. But I'll, I'll lean back to Panek. I expected that out of you, not him. I'm putting you in charge of dealing with any potential major medical crises, Doctor. Use the tools that are at your disposal. And I, if you don't like them, find others. I understand, Admiral. Just yank in your chain. Your chain. Yeah, and Merton will sort of lean over and go, if it makes you feel better, every day that ship gets used as a medical frigate is a day that we get to rub it in the face of Section 31. Yes. Well, well in that case, I'm all for it. <laughs> the other, um, its other role is going to be covert scouting and insertion of, insertion if necessary. Um, whatever the captain's name is going to be. Captain, that'll be Aside from your regular roles, should the Red November require that role, 
that will of course be yours and most likely drake and some of the marines will tag along if as necessary and the uh, the unnamed captain for the moment just sort of nods and says of course rear admiral mm-hmm. now now that that's out of the way uh, once a month, I would, my wife and I would be happy to host you and your senior staff in our quarters on board the Amalthea for a lovely evening of uh, dinner, drinks, chit-chat, and preferably as little work discussion as possible. Sounds good, Sounds Admiral. Good. I, uh, I have the same kind of thing aboard the Lysithia of my senior staff having dinner together once a week. If that is your request, Admiral. Of course. There's I'm, just glad, I'm just glad they gave the Admiral the bigger quarters instead of me. Hey, your captain's quarters are at least twice the size of mine used to be, Marthern. It's probably twice the size of mine on the Lysithia. Yeah, probably. Anyways, if there's nothing else, gentlemen? Not that anyone cares, but I am completely content with the size of my quarters. <laughs> well, isn't also there's only one person staying in your quarters? Isn't your uh, betrothed on the Amalthea? This has no factor on my, my contentment. She's still your betrothed, Panek. How long until your betrothed actually becomes your wife? Or is this one of those let's wait and see until such time is logical? The Kunut Kali Free is a arduous ritual that requires much time for preparation. Our schedules are not allowed. Understood. So, if you want anyone to officiate that that is not a Vulcan, please, I will be happy to do so. Uh. Anyways, if there's nothing else, gentlemen, uh, dismissed. Although, Captain Beckett, if you wouldn't mind staying for a second. Uh, Sure thing, Admiral. So unless uh, Panek and Mirthrin want to linger, uh, you two filter out along with the other captains, and it's just Beckett and Skull. Captain, I realize on... I realize that you're comfortable in Dr. Blue, but I must ask... For not only for my sake, but for the sake of the fleet as a whole, I request that it, if you're off your ship, please wear captain's red. Uh, okay, but I'm a captain of a science vessel. Nonetheless, captains wear red. That is the star. That is the Starfleet uniform guide. And as we're not only presenting a new front to species that we've yet to in- encounter, but I'm also having to ensure that all of my officers are following good good guidelines. We've already seen what happens if I rebel a little too much. They push us off into unknown space for an indeterminate amount of time. I would appreciate for these types of meetings, and especially if there's other admirals present, please wear Captain's Red. As you order, Admiral, you're just full of good news today, aren't you? Welcome to the late twenty-third or late twenty-fourth century. Where if it's not the Borg, it's the Typhon Pact. If it's not the Typhon Pact, it's the Q. If it's not the Q, it's the Dominion. You remember when we used to primarily be explorers? I do. I also remember that I spent two years, four months, and six days in another galaxy exploring. But now the ship that went in after me, I can't help. Yeah. Sucks, doesn't it? That is an understatement, Admiral. Yes, it does. Yes, it is. But well, if if it will make you feel better that I am wearing red when I'm not on my own ship, then I will endeavor to show up to these meetings wearing red. Thank you, Captain. And, okay, uh... And the- and speaking of your wife yes uh, once again she extends her warm her great thanks for getting her out of Romulus uh, you know I've, I've been your wingman a, 
quite a few times, you could have at least told me that one of the people I was going to pick up was your future wife. Well, Captain, how do you think I got that message in the first place? Oh, I know. And, yep. uh, I'm sure that, um, I'm sure that, uh, uh, Commander Drake and his men, uh, did their job admirably, and I'm glad to be of a service to get them in and get them out. Yep. That welcome to the, um, perils of upper echelon command and the three words everyone hates to hear need to know. I understand. Yeah. But, please, I do, despite me be, trying to be, despite me being a bit of a hard ass, do call me out if I'm being too much of one. It's hard for me to get this balance of admiralship right. Even after uh, four years. I, uh, well, I mean, I was your second officer for almost two years. I... I, I know when to suggest things when I think you're going in the wrong direction, and sometimes I'm right, and sometimes I'm wrong, but I've always been a good um, sounding board. I think Panek and I make good two sides to the same coin, if you know what I mean. You do indeed, old friend. And I'm assuming you've at least stopped by the Quarks to pick up some of your special stock? Uh, it's already aboard. It should be aboard the Lysithia by the end of the night. And, um... Oh, that was forced again. And I, uh, got a very large payment from him for all <laughs> the back pay. He seems to be doing quite well. Um, I didn't even have to threaten him that I talked to his brother about good business practices. <laughs> it's nice to... It's gotta be a pain when your brother's the Grand Nagus now. Uh, well, I look forward to sharing some with you at some point, Beckett. But I have duties to perform, and I'm sure you do too. Yep. Uh, I do, Captain, and uh, don't worry. I I did send a uh, couple of cases up to your uh, to your ready room. Um, I didn't know if you'd want them to go to your uh, your quarters with your wife, so I had them sent to the good office. That just means Cam will get them, and we'll probably start stifling them or s stashing them away. She <sighs> she might, but if she's anything for you, what she was for me, she will ration them out to you. So you'll still yeah. get them. You just may not be able to drink as many as you would like. Probably for the best. Probably. And Beckett will extend his hand. It is good to work with you again, Admiral. You too, Captain. You too. I'll shake it. And... As get up and lead the way out. Yep. All right. So, uh, mostly because I want to get to the uh, the big event sort of idea... Um, we're actually going to skip ahead until you guys are ready to depart through the wormhole. Um, but real quick, Mirthrin, are you back on voice yet? I hope so. Yep, okay. I can hear you. Yeah, we can hear, hear you. you. All right. So we're going to cut to the bridge of the Amalthea. Uh, at this point, every ship in the fleet is ready to go. Uh, you've got green lights across the board. All you have to do is either Mirthrin or Skull, if you want to be the one to do it. Uh, one of you has to give the order to embark. Uh, Captain, <clears throat> all other ships of the fleet are reporting ready to go. They're just waiting for the word. Awaiting orders, Captain. Did... Very well, then. All ships... Prepare to move out in formation with the Amalthea. Plot course for the wormhole. This is where Lieutenant, we find out if the ship can fit in wormhole. Yeah. Lieutenant, take us out. Half impulse. Aye, sir. Setting course to the wormhole. Half impulse. Engaging. All right. So we sort of have a exterior shot of the wormhole opening and all the ships beginning to fly into it. And yeah, I mean, we see entire Dominion fleets fly through it. So the Amalthea has no problem fitting inside. And immediately uh, the exterior view kind of cuts to that bluish, blackish sort of pulsating energy around you as you travel through the wormhole. But as that's going on, uh, Rosazzo, uh, and again, I apologize if I put your name, um, I need you to roll me a reason security at a difficulty of two, please. And the ship will be assisting you with a sensor security. 
do we still have that momentum or has it dropped away now with the scene change? I think with the scene changes, it's probably gone. Okay, reason security? Mm-hmm. Not my power score. <laughs> well, of reason. Oh. Uh, what is it, any hint at what this in regards to? In terms of um, I would say if you have tactical knowledge of uh, certain ships, it would be uh, appropriate. In fact, let me uh, let me just take a glance at your focuses, and I can just tell you straight up. Yeah, I have one that's like yeah. Let's see. Uh, yeah. you have one that is just XXX. Yeah, that's my. I I need to think of something later. I'm gonna let that. Okay, percolate. I would say it doesn't look like you have any focuses that would apply at the moment. Okay, so that's one. Uh, if someone can get the Amalthea, please. Can you roll Amalthea? Okay, and it is sensor security for the Amalthea. Got it. Okay, I'm going to let this succeed at cost, but I'm going to take the two threat for it. So, uh, what you notice, Rizazo, is that there is a ship decloaking behind you. And it is a Romulan warbird. Detecting ship. Unknown configuration. Wait, wait, Romulan. And this is just before we enter the wormhole, correct? This is while you're in the wormhole. Oh. Is that a D. Deridix class? Mm-hmm. Uh, sir, that appears to be a D. Deridix class vessel. D. Cloaking. Well, what are the other ships uh, aware of at this point? Uh, the other ships are detecting this as well. And all of you at once, uh, sort of all of your science officers have a collective gasp across all the bridges. And they immediately report in varying ways. Uh, so I'll speak for Ensign Hamasi here. Uh, Ensign Hamasi says, uh, Captain... They're jettisoning Silithium. They're trying to destabilize the wormhole with us in it. Ooh, Got shoot. Um, uh, can, can, can we... Uh, uh, well, quick, they're adjusting quick, quick, it. Uh, yeah, Mercer quick racking his brain to see if he can... Uh, to see if he knows of anything that could counteract. How about a torpedo up there? Front. Yeah, I don't think the aliens that live in the wormhole would appreciate that. I don't think they do appreciate being destabilized either. Let's see if we can knock. Uh, let's see if we can knock them out of war. Fire, uh, fire the phases targeting their nacelles. All right. So uh, that's going to be a control security, and the uh, ship is assisting with weapon security. The difficulty is two, so I do need to see a success here for the oh, ship. Uh... Ship was sensors security? Uh, weapon security. Weapon security, okay. Alright, yeah, so know, the though. Amalthea's uh, first fire uh, goes completely around the Warbird, and uh, we'll let the other ships act in a moment, but... Uh, it looks more... like, uh, sorry, it looks like Locke rolled science instead of security. Oh, good catch. I believe um, it actually did. Oh, yeah. Uh, but it is your security a five? No, it's a four. So. Yeah, so the 16 still wouldn't have worked. Okay, uh, good catch, though. Mm. Um, so uh, the Warbird continues to jettison Silithium. And at this point, uh, in case you do not remember the episode uh, that involves Silithium of DS9, uh, Silithium interacts with the Verderon particles in the wormhole and destabilizes it completely. And if there's enough of it, it can collapse the wormhole for good. Um, and even more bad news, uh, and this would be knowledge you would have just in general, because uh, this comes after DS9, like 2383. Um, a, war a Romulan warbird once detonated, like completely like warp core breach style detonated in the wormhole. And that's what sealed it in 2383. It only just reopened the wormhole, the profits... They only just reopened it a few months ago for you guys. Oh dear, so let's not blow up the warbird if possible. Yeah. So Captain. we're well go ahead. Captain, I have a solu I have a I have a suggestion. We are of we equal are, uh, 
we are of equal mass to this to, Der to the D. Derdix warbird, and probably of probably having roughly equal power, Pros probably more as we have four, four warp nacelles. Um, my suge I suggest that we ram it gently and then push it out of the wormhole, sir. Hmm, it's risky, but it would solve the problem without doing any damage to the wormhole itself. Increase power to shields. Let's do it. Yes, right. sir. I am. Piv I am bringing us about one eighty degrees. Okay. So in the uh, in the wormhole, uh, what would be your communications to the other ships? So let's briefly go through the other ships. What would the Ophion be doing at this moment? Uh, he. They would be. Um, I don't think they'd be going to a MVAM, but they'd definitely be powering phasers and rear shield and waiting for the uh, word from the Amalthea. Okay, and Lysithia, what are you doing? Uh, I am came up with the same kind of idea that the Amalthea did, and I was going to see if I could lock tractor beams on said the Deridex and shove it out uh, of the I think I've world. dropped out again. Okay. Now yep. we can hear you. All you right. come and go. I tell you what, let me, uh, let me quickly switch Discord servers, see if that makes it a little bit better for you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's change us to this. All right, we should be on a new server. Is that any better? Hello, hello, hello. Hi, how you doing, Bishop? I'm down to 200 millisecond ping, so that's good. Okay. I mean, as long as you can hear us, that's what matters. Um, so yeah, uh, so the Lysithia is aiming for a tractor beam. So yeah, Mirthward, what would you be telling the other ships in the fleet at this point? Uh, basically tell them we're going to try and push them out of the wormhole. Keep, keep clear, make sure you don't get caught in the collision. Um, then if, uh, uh, if the Amalthea radios that, then the Lysithia will change where its tractor is going to go and try to start picking up the, uh, canisters or whatever of the selenium. The Silithium. Okay. All right. Is so, it being, is it being deployed in a gaseous form, or is it being deployed in canisters? Uh, it is being deployed in gaseous form from the Dederix classes nacelles. Oh. Um, then, in which, use the buzzer we, collectors. That's what I was going to next. Okay. Uh, so let's do <laughs> the uh, Almathea first, or the Amalthea. Sorry. Um, a tractor beam, I believe, is a control security. So our lovely Horda. And the ship is assisting with structure security, and the difficulty here is a two. Uh, I'm actually going to spend some threat, though, because I'm a dick, and I'm going to spend enough to make it a difficulty four, complication 17 to 20. Well, hmm. I'm going to help you with that. I, 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 I didn't take the with, talent uh, that lets uh, me uh, give people advantage with command. Okay, a uh, little bit of crosstalk there. So, Mirthrin, you've got a, a a talent that lets you give advantages. Okay. Oh no, no, I, I, I was saying done. I didn't take that talent. Oh, okay. Uh, Locke, you were saying something, or I guess Rosazo, uh, you were saying. I'm going something. to help you with your problem thing by giving you more threat to buy an extra dice. Oh, okay. Um, and I was going to, because I think I have the ability that Mirthrin was talking about, um, and I have both call out targets and decisive leadership mm -hmm. um, to help my lovely Horta tactical officer be able to um, uh, I'm going to assist. Okay. Um, um, accor according to call out targets upon assisting a character making an attack um, the helped character generates one point of bonus momentum if they succeed. Bonus momentum cannot be saved to the group pool so you'd have to use it on the challenge dice roll. Okay. If I'm reading that right. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Okay, okay. so targeting with a tractor beam, um, structural engineering is a focus to pick a good solid part of the Deridex. Yeah, I'd allow it. Uh, so yeah, Gortag, you're going to be assisting with a, we'll say a presence and yeah, security. Sounds good. And uh, someone needs to get structure security on the Amalthea. I got the ship. Um, applicable focus... Um, Lead by example? Oh. Yeah. Oh, complication. I love it. Of course you do. If the Otheon sees that they're struggling with their tractor beam, could I, like, 
flip around and try to use help with my own tractor beam? Uh, you could, uh, but let's resolve this. So it was a difficulty four, so you get one momentum. And uh, yeah, you begin to uh, tractor beam. You, your tractors lock on to this to Derek's class. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, instead of pushing them out of the wormhole, all Question you see before to... that happens. Just yeah. This is my teacher. Uh, I can reroll AD20 since I bought one with Wretch. Oh. Could I reroll the ship's one? I believe you can, yes. All if right. not, we've re-roll. always done it that way. So yeah, I guess reroll the ship because that could get rid of this complication. <laughs> Sorry right. to jump in there, but. No, I appreciate it. Hey, another momentum. So, All right. s- small backtrack, you do lock onto the derricks, and you do start pushing it out of the wormhole, or at least trying to. Um, however, uh, at this point, I'm going to spend some more threat to create two complications. Uh-oh. The first complication is going to be that there is enough silithium in the wormhole that the passageway is beginning to constrict and buckle. So all of you are thrown about violently on all of your ships. And what that means is that all further tasks, all tasks, no matter what they are, while you are inside the wormhole, are going to be at an increased difficulty of plus two. The Ooh. other dif- the other complication is going to be that the tractor beam is actually causing more silithium to leak out of this Dederic's class. So within, shall we say, one full round of starship combat... So every ship is going to get another action. If something is not done to stop this silithium, uh, Mm -hmm. the entire wormhole might collapse. Um, Uh, So how how far are we from the edge from the alpha quadrant side of the wormhole? uh, You do not know. Uh, If you remember, well, if you if you, I'm trying to say how to say this. So in the show. There's sort of that interior passage time that they're not really clear how long it is. Okay. Um, but you're just in that passage somewhere. Okay. So okay. I have yeah, we I, need okay. we need to do something to disperse that silithium. Right, and I, I think just, I think Beckett, you had something in mind, so let's resolve you first. Um if if it will allow me to scoop up a large portion of it, I will use the the buzzard collectors. Okay. I know I said buzzard instead of bassard, but you know yeah, it's what it is. Um, or uh, I don't think I can make a containment field around it outside. Correct? I would say that uh, you could certainly envelop it with your shields. Uh, then I will do that because I I know the Lysithia has advanced shields, and it sounds like something cool that advanced shields might be able to do. Uh huh. And if you remember uh, the initial episode where Silithium was introduced, um, the trace amounts of Silithium were contained within a shield, but it was that small amount of Silithium that sort of opened up the live communication through the wormhole. Um, okay. But in any case, what it's going to be uh, for the Lysithia is I'm going to treat this as a modulating shields task. So uh, your tactical officer, so that would be, uh, uh, what's her name? Svarja? Not, well, it would either be Svarja oh. or uh, McCall's character, or, who I'm oh, blanking uh, on. Oh, Ty. Thank you, Ty. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, Svarja's in charge of shield, uh, tactical, so sh- that would be a Svarja check. Okay, so someone I, wants I to I just get... do tactical. Okay. I got her. All right, so Svarja is rolling a control security. Uh, the Lysithia, if someone can get the Lysithia, the Lysithia is rolling a structure engineering, and the I difficulty can. here is a two. Oh, God. Uh, I, I have the Lysithia sheet up. It, that's not a good roll. Um, all right. Here we go. Uh, you said control security for Svarja? That is correct. All right, so um, now from the Lysithia... Uh, Sparja will spend a point of um, momentum. Okay. Um, and applicable focus, Starship Tactical Systems. Yeah, that would apply here. And praise the Omnissiah. Hey, didn't praise it hard enough. So, unfortunately, uh, you go to uh, envelop uh, as much of the Silithium as you can. Unfortunately, it's just simply not enough. There's 
so much of this this substance that is spread out that the destabilization effect is rapidly increasing. The Opion would like to assist by entering MVAM mode and then each section trying to envelope a section of the gas with its shields. Okay. Uh, let me very quickly pull up MVAM rules. Uh, so for the Ophion, uh, I believe it, there is a task associated with MVAM, uh, given the, oh, you know what? We didn't even include the plus two difficulty. So that was actually at a difficulty of four. Um, but, uh, moving forward, we'll just have to remember that. Uh, so, uh, where is it? I'm trying to find, I'm pretty sure. Ophion also has advanced shields, by the way. Right. I think it was just, a it, one of the, uh, talents in the uh, ship sheet yes here it is okay uh da -da -da -da, <laughs> third or more blah 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 how do we separate okay separating or assembling the ship is a control plus con task with a base difficulty of two so this is going to be a difficulty four control plus con and that is assisted by the ship's computers plus con if someone wants to roll for Sona, I'll roll for the uh, ship. Yeah. What is Let's it for the sh ship again? The ship is computer and con. Oh no, so Sona's on the Amalfia. Uh, oh, I don't think we have a... my con officer? Uh, I don't think we've, think we've one. defined one yet, so just roll me a 2d20 and uh, your target number will be a 13 and your focus will be a 3. All right, so no help from the Ophion, unfortunately. And that's wow. actually complications. Oof. So the Ophion begins or attempts to start to separate into MVAM, but given the destabilizing nature of the wormhole, it's just violently shaking the ship and threatening to tear it apart. And then the Meiyuan, because the Meiyuan and the Red November get to move, the Meiyuan uh, moves in to try and assist with the tractor beam, but its tractor beam is unable to get a lock. And then the Red November uh, tries to fire phasers, but something goes wrong with their firing, and it completely blows out the entire lateral phaser array. And at this point, unless one of you spends determination to give your ship a another task, something's going to happen. So, I, I have one. Okay, what I'll, you got? I'll use I'll use my value uh, to say there is much to prove and many people to prove it to. Okay. Um, as we have a working track, we have a working tractor beam. Mm -hmm. if, um, so I am going to do a daring move. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to initiate a micro warp jump while in the wormhole with that thing, while opposed to the warbird. Okay. Interesting. Uh, I would say I would that say this is going that... to be a difficulty four task. Okay. Um, because I have, I also have the talent of push the limits when I attempt a con task in an, that is in an environment with increased difficulty due to the environment, I reduce the difficulty by one. All right. So difficulty three. So daring con for you. Mm -hmm. uh, the ship is going to assist you with engines con. Okay. And I will spend a point. I'll take threat. Okay. Or this. So. Is this still the Lysithia? No, uh, no, this is the uh, Amalthea. I'm not uh, asking for orders. I'm doing this. Uh, would you like someone to assist you? Um, um, thematically, I'm not even asking anyone for permission to do this, so I don't know if anyone's going to. Yeah, I, I would mean, say uh, he's just yeah, acting on instinct yeah. at this point. He hasn't said anything what he's trying to do. Ooh, very yeah, nice. Military oh, 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 oh. to try something completely different. Okay, I no, I was just going to chime in with uh, Gortek because Gortek also has helm operations, and seeing what he was doing, maybe Gortek would would see it and help. But mm -hmm. I get it, and it yeah. doesn't look like he needed help anyways. Um, yeah. Now, there's one other thing because I have the untapped potential, and I bought with threat. I roll one of the little insignia dice. Yep. Yeah, you don't. And get I roll it back. zero. So I don't get it back. Okay. So, so narratively, uh, uh, Deval immediately tries to do a micro warp jump, and it does succeed in a way, uh, but perhaps not in the way you were hoping. 
So the moment your warp field begins to envelop uh, the Amalthea, the ship, all the ships in the fleet rock once more violently, and all of you immediately are thrown into real space. Uh, your ships kind of tumble over one another and spread out across the field. And in the process, there are just explosions of EPS conduits and breaches in the hull as the sheer forces involved with being flung out of a wormhole just tear at the ships. And I'm going to put you guys preemptively on this map, but as your ships come to a stop, I have to tell you the bad news. So on the Amalthea, uh, we'll say uh, Ensign Rosazzo, you're noticing that you have so many breaches to sensors that the sensors are disabled. So that's seven breaches for the Amalthea. It's Captain, I'm detecting static and more static. <laughs> Status report! Helm is functional, Captain, but we've lost several maneuvering thrusters and... I'm unable to establish a functioning warp field. Uh, Gorteg hands flying across his his uh, console. Sensors out. We've got we've got nothing. Engineering here. We have we have major power disruptions all over the system. Breaches on decks three, seven, and six. Casualty reports. Multiple casualties coming in in med bay. We are going into crisis mode here. All right, and that's. That same sort of Imagine. sentiment is across yep. the entire fleet. Um, so I didn't want to cut you off, but we do have to get all the other ships in. So, yeah. uh, Ophion, you, because you tried to MVAM, are going to suffer four breaches to structures and one to engines. So uh, you'll want to keep track of that somehow. In fact, uh, I forgot to point out at the top of the session, but you guys should have a party notes handout that is editable by that? all. Uh, you might want to keep track of your breaches in there, because this is important. So was it six, six breaches for the Amalthea? Uh, the Amalthea seven. is seven specifically to sensors. Yeah. Actually, the ship sheets have breaches buttons. Oh, well, there you go. I completely missed that. Oh, yeah, yeah. If uh, if you guys look under your um, your systems, you should have little bubbles that you can click. Oh, okay, so what What was my mine was structure, right? Yes, yeah, so Ophion was four structure, one engines. And that is represented because you tried the MVAM, so you nearly tore the ship apart. Uh, the Lysithia, because you were trying to use your advanced shields in a fancy way, uh, you take three to engines and two to computers. And then the Meiyuan is going to take uh, four to comms, so the Meiyuan just simply is not responding to any hails or any communications. And then finally, the Red November uh, blew out its lateral phaser array, so it suffers three breaches to weapons. All right, and I think that's all the breaches. So all that information is coming in. Uh, obviously, because the Meiyuan's comms are down, you don't know the status of the Meiyuan. But the rest of the fleet is able to communicate, and that is what's happening. Getting reports, all other ships reported, survived, except for May U1 status, undetermined. Okay. Emergency damage repair teams concentrate on make sure, making sure life support is up and running, then get those sensors back online. Send a wing of fighters out to do a quick scout of the immediate area, see if we can get eyes on all the ships. Uh, yes, Skull. Captain. Working on it. Skull's going to burst on the bridge. Captain, report. We appear to have been kicked out of a wormhole, Admiral. Splendid. Unable to determine location. Yes, sir. Turns out we got followed by a Dideridex class that decided it would be a good idea to drop Silithium in our path. <sighs> Speaking, speaking of which, I have no idea where that where that Dideridex went. Went. Keep an eye out for it when you send the fighters out. Yeah, and uh, actually, as uh, you launch your Valkyrie fighters out, you do get eyes on it, at least partially. Uh, apparently, I didn't give us enough view, but uh, let's say your fighters uh, swarming around, you find that the uh, IRW Benella 
is uh, sort of listing in space behind where the Amalthea is. Hail that ship. All right, so uh, you hail and you don't get a reply. Hmm. Send out a second wing of fighters. Keep a keep a close watch on that thing. If it so much as twitches. All right. So another fighter wing goes out. Uh, Captain, what's the status of the other ships? Uh, almost as bad as we are. The May One. We can't get. We can't reach the May One on comms. The no- Red November's. Phaser banks are blown out. The Ophion's as bad as it's ever been. Uh, Lysithia, uh, uh, I can't quite tell from the damage reports, but it looks like they took some serious damage to the compu- to the structure. Fine. Uh, I'll take a... Uh, Skull will just take a seat and said, let me know if I can be of help. Captain, uh, permission to deploy the Callistos to act as a... Uh, combat patrol and maybe also get line of sight communications with the May 1. Agreed. Send out the IO and the Europa. And in the meantime, and he'll sort of just send an open channel communication to the Dideridex class. We will deal with you later. In the meantime, stay put. Okay. Uh, where would you like the re- the Europa to be at this point? Um, I, I say just circling with the fighters. Okay, I'll just put it here then. Okay. So, uh, with that all happening, uh, the IO does fly out and does make contact with the Mei Yuan using uh, visual only, sort of like laser guidance. And they are able to report that, yes indeed, their communications are completely blown out. Uh, but it is at... Oh, go ahead. Drake here is calling Skull. I was just doing it as a, a, a side thing. But, no, no, let's make uh, the whole thing. Admiral Skull, uh, Drake here. Skull here, go ahead. Uh, permission to deploy the Marines to help with uh, emergency repairs and also emergency emergency medicine. Uh, permission granted. We do have one ho- potential hostile on the field. Keep one team on standby near one of the assault transporters. Uh, very good, sir. I will... I will get a team suited up. Let me know the second you want me in this fight. Skull out. And well, it is at well, this What's the course. status of the Amalthea's phaser arrays? Well, they are uh, firmly active. No damage, unfortunately, with these sensors inoperative. We cannot achieve target lock. Right. Make it. All right. Well, once we're sure life support's working up again, make that the top priority. And it is at this point that Captain Beckett, you get a very urgent message from Master Chief Hylong. Uh, <laughs> uh, go ahead, Hylong. What? Add more to the plate. You need to come see this, sir. Like now. Uh, are we being boarded? No, but you might wish that we were. All right, uh, I'm on my way. Uh, Ty, you got the bridge, Sparja, with me? Sir, yes, sir. All right. So, uh, we cut to stellar cartography, which is actually very nice on the Lysithia. And, uh, that, when you... that map is awesome. Yeah, it's, oh, it's a very nice yeah, map. Yeah, that's nice. It's a very nice map. Uh, when you step in, uh, you see that uh, Hylong is doing her best in the chaos to sort of figure out where you are. And Beckett... I'm going to show you a handout, or at least give you access to a handout. And I'm going to let you roleplay what, uh, what you see, but Hylong just sort of shows you this and says, like I said, it's not good. Okay. Uh, I'm, for everyone else, Beckett slash Walter's first reaction is, Son of a bitch! How positive are you on this? Uh, obviously, it would be better if we had the other ships confirm, but I am 99.7% sure that this is where we are. 
do you have it marked on there where exactly where we are or you just... are the blue dot oh wait let me blow this up the blue dot on the far left side yep wonderful right um i i don't know how to take this um uh who's who's on sensors in it was uh serrano uh becca to serrano go ahead uh can you patch me into the uh amalthea uh connecting you through now sir and after a moment uh Mirthrin and skull both of you would uh hear beckett's voice beckett what is it you want good news or bad news uh let's start with the bad news we're not where we're supposed to be uh master chief high long just while going through all this cranked up stellar cartography <laughs> If I'm reading what she just handed me right, we are somewhere in the neighborhood of 20,000 light years off target. There's a slight pause. Are you sure there's not an extra zero on that? Well, according to her, and she says she's 99.7% sure, we are 19,450 light years off where we were supposed to be. Uh, so... Out of character, sort of, where does that put us? So, I just switched us to a new map. Uh, if you were to look, the dotted line, the, like, tiny dotted line, is the actual wormhole path. Uh, the actual travel path of where you ended up, you are currently that blue dot. And that blue and black line is if you took a straight path to where the wormhole's supposed to exit. And uh, though this the map quick doesn't... Back of the envelope. Yeah, and a quick back of the envelope calculation tells us that at Mac, that at cruising warp speed it would take us at cruising uh, at the Amalthea's warp nine point five. That's going to take you about ten years and uh, four months. And to it's, get back to where the wormhole would should be should be yes. Um, what this Assuming map it hasn't show, been completely destabilized. Correct. What this map does not show, uh, if you actually look at the handout. Uh, the handout has the line back to the Alpha Quadrant if you just started heading in that direction. That is like 58,000 light years. And I didn't even calculate that, but it's it's a lot. That's uh, getting up to Voyager levels. Mm -hmm. uh, Beck, it'll continue. Uh, I'm going to have High Long... Uh, keep cranking the sensors and looking for targets. Apparently my sensors made it through okay, but my computer core is shot. It, right now the only thing that's working is, is stellar cartography. I'll start mapping everything around us and I'll give you a better picture as soon as I've got one. Uh, maybe we can link the uh, Amalthea's computers into yours. Our sensors are completely gone, so we can't use our scanners at the moment. Uh, yeah, sounds like a plan. Like, let's, uh, we'll line of sight, relay everything together, and we'll just use the whole fleet as one big set of sensors. Sounds good. Uh, Captain, have two of the, uh, launch the other two Callistos and keep that Romulan ship in tractor lock. Whether it likes it or not, it's now part of the, f it's, it's part of our fleet, whether as a prisoner or as a willing, um, assistant. Uh and I thought um, integrating marquee, uh, a marquee for the troop was uh, enough of a headache. Uh, also, uh, I'm, I'm sure Skull's on the bridge. Uh, Admiral, permission to uh, turn around and, and see if we can start helping the other ships? Or do you want us to go out further? No, see to the, see to the safety of the fleet first. We're not under attack immediately. Let's hope it stays that way. Uh, keep the keep the Callistos on picket duty, and I'll I'll start dropping my my uh, well back a letter terms. Uh, my ambulance is out to check on the other ships. Okay. 
All right, and it is at this point as you guys start to sort of send out things that you do get a response from the Romulans. On screen? So very strangely, when you uh, see them on screen, you do not see a Romulan. Well, you do see Romulans, but they're just sort of in the background. Uh, prominent on the view screen is a Tholian you're very much familiar with. Uh, so Mercer and all sort of look. Oh, sweet mother. And then they'll just launch into a string of curses. Mm -hmm. Captain. My apologies. That was unprofessional. Uh, what was his name? And, again? um, uh, it was Commander was Nostreen. And he identifies himself as such. He says, This is Commander Nostreen of the IRW Benella. I hope you enjoy Yes, I recognize treat. you, Commander Nostream. I hope you have a very good explanation. I do. We have eliminated the Ophion threat, and we will be able now to take over the Sabine Expanse. And then, uh... Well, that's as... very nice. Well, that's very nice for you, Commander Nostream. Unfortunately, you will not be around to see it, because we are currently, by my estimation, about 50 years travel from home. And ten years travel from the wormhole, assuming it even survived. Uh, I would like either um, uh, Rizazo. I would like you either to roll me a reason security and a sensor security from the Amalthea. And I'll say that all the security officers in the fleet can make the same roll for their ships. So the Lysithia, that could be Sparjo, or that could be Ty. For the Ophion, right. that could be uh, Quakenbush. And for Red November and the Mayuan, don't worry about it. I'll roll um, for Ty. I was going to say, go ahead and roll for Ty, because Svarja is not on the bridge right now. Yeah. yeah. That was Sorry, that was control security? Uh, that was reason security. Yeah, sorry. Reason security. Mm -hmm. Security. Yeah, and Drake's nowhere near a con computer to even, like, have a shot. So. Right. I don't, okay, here we go. I might have gone through for a change. Yeah, it doesn't look like yours went through there, Jester. There was two successes, sadly. All right. All right. But there it goes. Just low. Oh, there it goes. Okay. All right. Well, uh, go ahead and roll the three ships, because that could get you momentum. The difficulty here was a two. I've got the, the Amalthia. <laughs> All right. So the Amalthia gets you two momentum. And uh, for the ships, it was what? Sensor security? Sensor security. Uh Uh, no fo Are no all, the, all the ships rolling? Uh, yes, so I need one from Ophion, one. and we already have Lysithia, all right? So I need to see one from Ophion now. All right. Ooh, the Amalthia is still cracking. Okay, so all of you are going to detect the same thing at the exact same moment. And I would say that the crew of the Amalthia, Mirthrin and Skull in particular, are going to notice, uh, as this report comes in, that... The IRW Benella is powering a experimental warp drive, one that you've dealt with in the past. A QSD? Not a QSD. Is uh, it that thing that Vetu was no playing way. with that ran into a planet? Correct. Except it looks like they've done a little bit of work on it. How so, badly messed up is their ship? Uh, so their ship looks like it's got its own set of breaches. But I'm actually, and I know we probably only have about 10, 15 minutes before people got to start running. Um, so I'm just going to very quickly put us all into initiative order here. Um, so let me just add the Lysithia, uh, add the Amalthia, and the Red November's out, so is the Mayuan. So we'll also put the Ophion on here. And I would say you guys have one turn to stop the IRW Benella before it's gone. Okay, one second. I just want to double check something in the sheets. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would say that it could be any, it could be the Lysithia, the Amalthia, or the Ophion first. I just need to know what you're doing. Does the Ophion still have those super duper transporters? Uh, no, transport. that was. Yeah. I don't remember who. Yeah, that was the Ophion. Yep. Yeah, that's Ophion does have the invasive. Yeah, and the likes um, of got the cloaking device. Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, I'm reminding myself of this as we go. Yeah, you're right. So, right. Mertron will sort of signal to sort of cut communications and then settle on the 
uh, signal the Ophion. Ophion, if you can get a lock on that Tholian, get him in your brig. Very well, Captain. Lock. Uh, um, I don't know who my fucking con officer is, but I tell them, uh, <laughs> bring us a bad one, Mark. And, and, and then he'll send a message to the, the um, uh, Callisto escorts to sort of scramble clear of its exit path so that they don't get run down. Gotcha. Um, so I, uh, I gotta move closer to get transporter lock. Yeah, so if you want to do transporters, even with your souped-up transporters, you need to be at least within long range. Right now, I believe you're at extreme, but let's double-check. Uh, actually, no, you're uh, you're at long range, so you would take penalties for it being long range. Uh, that being that it is uh, all said and done, I think this is technically a, te a difficulty six. So you would need to spend two momentum to create an advantage for you even be able to activate these transporters. I've only got the one turn, right? Yes. So I, it doesn't really make much sense to move forward. Well, let me say this. You could move, but you would then immediately have to spend the two momentum to keep the initiative and act again. I mean, okay. we have the momentum. Go for it. Yeah. Well, how close would I have to move? Uh, you would have to move within at least six units. So let me pull out the ruler oh. tool again. Yeah. Uh, I have a question. I might have an answer. Uh, you guys were talking about somebody needed an advantage? Yes. Uh, can... Would Drake know enough of what's going on right now to be able to, I don't know, send Locke a message of what uh, did Derek's class shields frequency might be using my intelligence officer trait? Yeah, I would say that Drake being the fleet intelligence officer would be able to do that. So that is your advantage and the difficulty comes down to a five, but it is still a difficulty five uh, control engineering assisted by the ship's sensors engineering. Yeah, this is basically a Hail Mary before the he escapes. Right. All right, so remove two uh, two momentum to keep yes, uh, the to keep the uh, initiative, and then I guess I'm going to try to transport the Tholian off. Do you want me to do it with my with Mito? He has a transporter's focus, and he's shooting for a fifteen. Yeah, go for it, and I'll I'll back up with with. Okay. Um, I'm going to buy a die with momentum. Okay. And uh, could I use my commanding officer a bit talent to give him a point of determination? You could, but he's already rolled. All right. Uh, what do I rather roll for the ship? The ship is assisting with sensors engineering, and I need to see a crit here, or it's not going to work. Well, I have cautious engineering, so I'm going to redo oh. my. Oh yeah, zero. go for the reroll then. Okay. Oh, 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 so close. Oh, so close. So close. So even with could break. I... Oh, go ahead. Could I burn determination to be able to? You could. Yes, go go for it. Uh, which value should I do? Family is everything. Is any a supporting yeah, character? Right. I would say no, family. That 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 I'm not really feeling that value. Uh, uh, damn, if we, we haven't been, we haven't been a family long enough yet. If yeah. if only if only I'd made the roll, I got a perfect value for this. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, Mito's family is on the Malthia. Uh, sure, you know Still... what? I'll allow it. Why not? Alrighty. No pressure. Yeah, no pressure. Just waiting. There hey, we go. All right. So yes, the Ophion is able to beam away Commander Nostreen into their brig. But the ship appears to still be powering up its warp engines. And we're going to cut to you. Let's do the Lysithia. Okay. Uh... Do, do, do. The Lysithia. Um, I have absolutely no idea uh um other other than just firing on it uh i don't 
have an idea unless someone else's character on the Lysithia has an idea. Uh, um, well, actually, um, I, I do have an idea, actually. Go for it. I, I'm thinking uh, uh, Jessamine Swan can basically go, okay, it's going that way, and just like quickly just do a, a tight burst sensor sweep to figure out the rough direction it's heading and how far it could potentially go. Okay. Uh, roll me uh, a roll Reason me. Con, and the ship will assist you with Sensors Con. The All difficulty right. here will be a 2. Uh, what, what, some, what was it? Some, uh, control con? Uh, reason con. Reason con. Ship gets your one. Uh, let's check focuses. No, not right. So just straight reason con. Um, okay, I'm going to. Well, no, uh, that my talent will work in this instance. Don't mind me. Uh, yeah, I'll, sp I'll spend that last point of momentum to get an extra die. Okay. Nice. And you get it pretty much right back. Uh, you get three momentum, in fact. And uh, yeah, now, does you... untapped potential work when you spend momentum or just threat? Uh, I uh, believe both. it's just threat, and it's only when you spend your determination. <laughs> Ah, yeah. No, it's uh, when I succeeded a task where they bought additional dice using momentum or threat, and then you re-roll an effect dice and receive bonus momentum equal to the roll. Oh, or no, I'm thinking of veteran. That's what it is. I'm thinking of veteran. All right, so I will roll the challenge dice. Mm -hmm. that, that is a one, so one momentum back. That. All right, so... Uh, yeah, you're able to tell where this ship is going to be going. And I would say that if you wanted to, say, spread that information to the rest of the fleet, um, yep, any, so. any attempts to lock onto it with sensors or weapons will be at a reduced difficulty. Yep, so Jessamine will go... Yeah, yeah. All right, I've got a fix on the heading, transmitting to the fleet. Uh, can we... Uh, we're not... We're not at long, are we? Uh, you Large. are currently at medium, I believe. Let me let me break out the ruler again. Uh, no, you actually you are at long. So could we, like, throw a torpedo at them? You could certainly shoot a torpedo at them. Uh, looking to my security officer on the bridge. <laughs> yes, sir. Let's. Uh, right. Um, I'll fire it. I guess since Svarge is gone, I'll. Tactical comes to me, so I will fire a photon torpedo right at the Banala. Okay, banala? so banala. very important uh, questions here. So it is a base difficulty of three, mm -hmm. um, and are you aiming at a particular system, or are you just shooting and seeing where it hits? Uh, I'm aiming engines. Engines, all right. That would make it a difficulty four. Sure. Let's see what happens here. All right, so you're rolling control security, and the ship is assisting with with weapons and security. And do and remember that spending or firing photons, firing torpedoes, does give me threat. Yep, fine by me. And I will spend a momentum to gain an extra dice on the attack roll. Okay. And ship's going to assist with weapons and security? Correct. I got the ship. All right. Wow, nice. Wow. Nice. Yeah. All right, uh, go ahead and roll your uh, your photon damage. Okay, uh, which is how many dice? I five. believe it is five. Nice five. That's not bad. All right. Uh, do you want to spend anything to reroll those zeros? Add sure. piercing. Um, let's add piercing. Actually, what's their power situation? Do I, do I want to drain their power or do I want to add piercing? Well, I mean, we don't know how this experimental drive, like, yeah, if, piercing if could give them breaches, which would give us some some something to work. He's yeah. got a point. Let's have piercing. Regions, yeah. Okay. Uh, how okay. many dice are you spending on piercing? Um, I am spending. Um, 
Sorry, the fog, the charts occluded by fog of war. I can't really. Oh, it. sorry. Uh, it's yeah. one per two. Okay, so I'll add two dice piercing. Okay. So w one momentum to re-roll the zeros. Okay. Uh, which is these two here. Nope. Yeah, well, that didn't work. Right. Okay, and then so add piercing of two. All right, so that is actually enough to uh, take down the shields, what remain on the vanilla, and it is enough that you hit their engines, and because you have high yield, that's two more breaches, which means that the vanilla's engines are now completely disabled, meaning it's not going anywhere. In fact, uh, you see that its, it's port nacelle is leaking plasma, and uh, power is intermittent across the entire ship. Admiral Skull to Lieutenant Drake, or Lieutenant Commander Drake. Uh, take, Drake here, Captain. Admiral. Take, ev take, ev take whatever shuttles you can take from the Amalthea. Take every Marine. I want that ship and all of its per personnel secured. <laughs> Gladly, Admiral. All right. And, and unfortunately... Uh, oh, go ahead, Martin. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, I must well say, do you want me to send a message across telling them to stand down, or would you prefer it to be a surprise? Yes, please. Tell them they're go they're b prepare for boarding. Uh, did we? Um, I know it's transporter activity from the Ophion. Did we beam someone over? If if I'm if we're lucky, they managed to get Commander Nostream in the brig. Splendid, and the, I develop a little evil, mal yeah, evil grin. Evil. So Mertheron will send an open com to the Benalla again. Mm -hmm. This is Captain Mertheron of the USS Amalthea to the... Uh, I'm assuming we know it's the Benalla based yeah. on the IRD coast. To the IRW Benalla. Stand down and prepare to be boarded. All right. And that, gentlemen, is where we have to end the session, unfortunately. So, uh, as I said, uh, hopefully a... Uh, Interesting twist. I know I'm sort of stealing from Voyager, but uh, yeah. Uh, but let me end the stream, and then we can talk as players and GM. So, stream, thank you so much for tuning in. Hopefully you guys had just as much fun as we did, and I will see you guys next week. Bye-bye, stream. Bye-bye. Bye, stream. Bye -bye.